Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Okay, so are you aware of Freight Waves, Global, Industry, Trucking, News, Media? Tonight, I mean, I've got special guests on the show. I'm so excited to bring them on. It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Welcome back to the show. y'all the auto transport intel it's tuesday nights live we made it can you believe it i mean i know it's tuesday but man i got a case of the mondays i don't know about you guys listen let me know if you can see me and hear me okay uh let's see let's go ahead and turn down see i've got audio coming through there we go let's turn that down so yeah, let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. I appreciate it. Listen, I appreciate you guys joining me again on a Tuesday night. Um, must say that a week ago, that was a whopper of a show, Auto Transport Software Update. And so since then, it's just been kind of crazy. Um, so listen, if this is your first time here, I want to welcome you. I want to thank you. Listen, I really mean it. It means a lot that you tune in and you join me. And you, you know, you make this a Tuesday night, a community event. It really does mean a lot. And so I want you to feel welcome. I want you to please join the live chat. Uh, that's what's going to happen in a few minutes. We're going to go into the live chat. We're going to say hello to everybody that's here. If you've got something to say, please say it. If you've got something to share, please share it. This is a community. It really is an event. And it's Tuesday night. What else are you going to do on a Tuesday night, you know? All right, cool. So then we're going to go into industry news. That's the crazy stuff. There's funny stuff. There's actual news. You will get some information. You'll laugh. You'll cry. Um, and then we're going to go into the information superhighway. That's where I'm going to start to set up the actual topic of the night. We're talking about freight waves. Do you guys know about freight waves? There's a lot to talk about. So we're going to get into that. And then uh, then we're going to have, we have three interviews tonight. Interview number one is with Emily Zink. She is the lead anchor over at Freight Waves, Freight Waves TV, Freight Waves Now, Freight Waves Sonar, Freight Waves, Freight Waves. I'm not kidding. Then we're going to talk to Tom Mallon. Uh, I've met Tom. Tom has a lot of knowledge. And he's going to teach us about the freight trucking futures market. What the what? I'm serious. You are going to love getting into that information. And then we're going to do kind of a cool down. Kyle Cunningham, he is a host of the Night Shift on Freight Waves TV. So then we're going to kind of end the night in, uh, in spiritual fashion with the Night Shift. I mean, there's a ton of stuff happening tonight on this show. And if you know Freight Waves, then there's not a lot of news here as far as you're going to get to know the people. That's what's really cool. Um... You know, I'm checking, okay, I think we're okay. Um, I know that, you know, we, we watch videos, right? And we learn things, but sometimes it's cool to get to know the people that make the shows, and that's what we're going to do tonight. So if you're not familiar with Freight Waves, then that's going to happen tonight. I'm excited for you. I'm really, I'm excited for me, for you, for them. Um, I think in general, I'm just a little bit giddy. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to make sure you stick around, because we're going to be right back. Are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone? 
Call Murphy Auto Dispatch Services today. Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. That's right. Sue's a friend of the show. Did I cut off the end of that? Hey, do me a favor, Kimberly. Will you will you plug in the phone number and the uh, email address for Sue? I was listening. I wasn't watching. Dang it. And I think I cut off the end of that ad. So do me a favor and share that for me. Um, Sue has tons of information. Listen, if you if you need a dispatcher, you want to learn more about dispatching and brokering, she's been doing it forever. She's got so much information. So you're going to want to check that out. All right, let's go into the live chat. Uh, let's see who's with us here. Hey, Ty made it in first. What's up, Ty? Is this where you find car hauling business? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, when we're not griping about it, sometimes this is where you'll find car hauling griping. You'll find car hauling crying. Uh, hopefully, this is where you find car hauling business. Listen, I want to say this too. You know what? Uh, it, it wasn't lost on me, once again, how much it means to have a community. Um, you know, it means a lot. Not only does it mean a lot to me that, that you're here, but I know that for some of you guys, and I get the emails, it means a lot that this show continues that we reach and share and that you know we're trying to get the word out so i appreciate you uh sure as heck as much as you guys sometimes appreciate the show and this information so thank you so much it really means a lot um oh hey kimberly kimberly's with us she says hello to ty uh thank you kimberly for manning the chat and for putting the information in i really do appreciate it hey mark is with us you are first again ty i'm gonna get you next week Oh, uh, so we got a competition. That's cool. A little bit of healthy competition. Never hurt. Sue, is this where we talk to Jay and Ty? This is Sue. Thanks for joining the show. And you know what? I want to say this too. If you are, if you're thinking about advertising on Auto Transport Intel, I want to tell you that being in the live chat on Tuesday nights is definitely a way to secure that you get your money's worth and that it's meaningful. So great job to you guys. Mark, I'm looking forward to having your information on the show. Sue, I love having your information on the show. It's awesome. Uh, let's see here. Mark and Sue already doing business, and they're even going to tell us more details about what time they're going to talk tomorrow. That's pretty cool. Hey, Hector Dash is with us. What's up, Hector? Thanks for tuning in. means a lot. I hope this show is helpful and informative and that I'm making your Tuesday night brighter. You know, that it's about 7.30. We're all, at, you know, what's the anticipation level like? You know, is it going to be a good show? Is he going to go live? You know, am I going to get my fix? Uh, TDK Transports, hey, Jay, hey, Sue, Ty, all of our brothers and sisters. That's right, TDK. Thank you so much for saying it. It is true. We are a community. It's happening. Uh, oh, okay, Mark and Sue are going to have a meeting at 10 a.m. tomorrow, Eastern Time. Uh, so don't be late. Sue says, hey, you got my number. <laughs> what are you wearing? See you here, you fine. Thank you, TDK. Means a lot, by the way. If you haven't already given a like, please do. Please remember to like, share, and comment. It helps a lot. Carlos, hey, what's everyone doing? ACB Logistics. ACB Logistics. Thank you, Carlos. Hector, sound is good. Fred, first time. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Thanks for joining us, man. It's Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I only go live once a week right now. Um, there is just a, there's a lot going on. There's so much email information and phone calls and changes. My gosh, it's crazy. Uh, it's hard to keep up. It gets a little, uh, you know what? It really, it, I, I think it, it's like all logistics, right? When I was dispatching, it was crazy. Now that I got the show, it's crazy. You guys are driving around. The traffic is crazy. Your ELD's gone crazy. That's why. You know what? My ELD's broken. Look at this. What is this thing? It's not, not a real ELD, Jay. That's why it's broken. American Venture Inc. Hey, what's up, American Venture Inc.? Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Crypto Trucker is with us. What's up, Crypto Trucker? Mark from Superflow. Looking forward to tonight's show. 
Ask those guys how you can get a studio as nice as Freight Waves. I, You know what? That's a good question, Mark. I need to ask him that. How do you get a studio? Man, they got a great studio. Oh, man. Oh, it's awesome. It really, it's amazing. They got a great setup. They're in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, let's see. Ty, Hector, Ty, Kimberly. What else we got? Oh, let's see here. Oh, Wilmer. Wilmer Ortiz, great show, always watching from Clearwater, Tampa. Well, th thank you, Wilmer, for letting us know. I don't know why I salute. I keep doing that, you know? It's part of my thing, and, you know, you just, you got to accept it, man. You got, you, whatever your crazy ticks are, whatever your ritual and, you know, all that stuff. Shared the driver's side page. Sweet, dude. Cody Martinez coming out of Phoenix, loading and listening. Dude, that's... <laughs> <laughs> loaded and listening i like that cody thank you buddy uh, that means a lot thanks for the show great job i appreciate that cody it means a lot that you're here and i really i do hope it's a great show every show you know i i never know what's gonna happen i hope i hope uh car shippers in what's up joe uh we gotta have a meeting joe we do we need to talk we need to talk more uh we, we got to see what we can put together Let's see, Wilmer, no brothers, transport, TKS for your, oh, thanks for your info, bless you. Thank you, Wilmer, bless you, man. I mean that, I really do. Uh, Luis Galvez, first time live, finally. You made it, Luis, thanks for making it to the show, that's awesome. Um, Trucker Life TV, happy to be watching live. Thank you, Trucker Life, that's awesome. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Wendy's here, Clearwater. Clearwater Revival, what it is. Daryl Spencer, what if your dualies in 1999 or older? Do you still need an ELD? Good question, Daryl. Francisco's LLC, hello from NC. By the way, did you see what I did there, Daryl? I didn't answer the question. Here's the thing. My show's not the same as Trucking Answers. Um, I'm more of a... Okay, so I'm more of a media guy. I think I've established that. And so what I'm doing is I'm bringing in the experts and the interviews because, dude, if I answer that question, if I get it wrong, man, I hate that. I think I know the answer. I don't want to get it wrong. I want to leave it to the experts. Francisco's LLC, hello from NC. All red, okay, all red to the finish line. <laughs> all red to the finish line. Good show. Watch for Mississippi. Thank you. Thank you. And I, and I hope it doesn't bother you that I don't answer the question directly. I just, you know what? I've learned the hard way. Man, when I get the answer wrong, oh, dang it. You know? I hate that. Don't you hate that when you get that wrong answer and they all just want you to be fired and kicked off? Makes you crazy. Wilmer, thank you. Anna Buckley, Joe from Chicago. Daryl, first time also from Alabama. Man, that's great, you guys. Thanks so much. Here's what I want you to do. I do want you to stick around because here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to industry news. Man, we're right on time. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to be right back. Hey, guys. Ty, CTS Business Coaching. I connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. If you're a dealer and you're not getting your inventory on the lot in five days ready to sell, you've got a problem. It's called interest. Like I'm telling you something you don't know. Give me a call. I can connect you with an auction and a carrier, and you can get your cars on the lot in five days or less. 417-483-2764. Thanks, and have a great day. Oh, by the way, I want to say this. You know, you just saw that video. That was Ty. That was, he was at the airport. He's talking about CTS business coaching. Listen, I mean this. I got an email from a guy just a few days ago. He was talking about his dispatching service to prove this is a community, all right? I want you to email me. If you've got a business, you just started a business, you've got a business, you've been around 15, 20 years, 100 years, whatever it is, grandma's got a business, email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Man, I will throw anybody a bone in the industry news, which you're about to see in a second. If you want to become a formal advertiser, you know, I definitely want to talk about that. But if you've just got, man, you got a graphic you want to share, Listen, I, I really, I mean it. I want, I want to prove that this is the Car Shipping Business Channel and that we will share the information. This is a community. You're a part of it. I'm the host, and we're, we're doing it. We're going to do it every Tuesday night. We're going to go live every Tuesday night. Man, and by the way, Poker Man is with us. And Poker Man, by the way, answered that question. Nope, 99 or older, no ELD due to OBD plug and computer. Right, so... I, didn't, I thought it was a no, but actually I like the OBD specification, 
right? Because you got to be able to plug into the OBD port. Although I think there might be other solutions, but I think the truth is pre-99, and I, is it pre-2000? It's the engine build. It's either 99 or 2000. Anyways, that's why I leave it to the experts. I had a pretty close educated guest. Fred, Paul, Eric, Doug, what is going on, you guys? Thanks for tuning in. Man, Julia's with us. Hey, what's up, Julia? Andre is in here. This is getting great. Thank you guys so much. It is now time. Oh, we're one minute late for industry news. One stinking minute, right? Well, you should have you should have planned for that, Jay. This is what truckers do when you honk and flip them off. <laughs> it's such a great. That is just a great Goodfellas. Probably the best. That's not the best shot in Goodfellas, maybe, but it is. It is great. And true. Uh, spend the rest of your life behind the bars for just forty-five grand. Saw nine-car stinger sale ad. <laughs> it's not for everybody, but it is a family show. I had to put something before this. I mean, I can't lead with this. First time driving. How's everyone doing today? Next day. <laughs> He's kidding. He's a kidder. Uh, hey, need help backing your truck in the dock? Twenty-five bucks. See, and this is where, this is what I was thinking. It's the face on the right. Twenty. The heck? Okay. All right. Now let's get back to car hauling. Okay. Here's a good one. Florida to Utah, Ford E350. Are say it isn't so. Six cents a mile. It's. Is it a typo? I probably not. That's why they shared it on, uh, well, here's another one. Here's another one. Here's it. Whoops. <laughs> Your face just hit the desk. There's an F-250, 23 cents a mile, Texas, Oklahoma. Uh, I think we got a picture, if I'm right. This, this just in. I think we got a picture of the delivery. Yeah. Yeah. You get what you pay for. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, and I don't bother. I mean, the height thing is right there. I guess you're already in the turn. Why not just go for it? Eight, nine car haulers. What are you guys grossing per week? Um, well, let's see here. Let's see if I could do four of these a week. Uh, nothing. Okay. People are the people. Do you see the comments? Go ahead and post that stuff. Go ahead. This is why, I guess this is why you don't connect the load boards to the, uh, if you connect the load boards to your social media, maybe that's, my, now we know why. Now we know why. Oh, I didn't, uh, you know, I hate it when it does that. Let's do this. Let's go back into the news. We're going to go back in the news. Oh, here you go. Here's how you get that six car load at 38 cents a mile. Just go ahead and get some two by fours. That'll work. Oh, we did that one. Okay, we did that. 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 Oh, okay, here we go. Optical illusion. Hmm? But, I mean, you 38 cents a mile, pretty much. That's what you're looking at. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I ask you, again, is, is this a car hauler? Um... Because at some point, there's got to be a point at which when they add enough cars, it's a car hauler. I, I'm just saying. Last week it was one. This week it's two. Is that a car hauler? I mean, right? And by the way, check out the difference here. Boom! <laughs> now that's a car hauler. Thank you, Sean. By the way, that is Sean of Ocean Roads Transport. Crushing it. Thanks for the picture, Sean. Man, those vans are everywhere. Oh, okay, I shared this. Yeah, I shared this. This was out on, uh, I think it was on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, inadequate forecasting. No doubt. Inadequate forecasting, one of the biggest causes of inefficiency in finished vehicle logistics. Now, who would have thought? You know, I'll bet there's many a uh, new car hauling fleet manager that already knew this. But now, 
Automotive Logistics, they shared it as an article. And what's really cool is then EC, the ECG, Mike Sturgeon at ECG, it's a European uh, association of car hauling, car shipping. Yeah, man, it's time to start talking about this. Do we really need, does, does half of the Finnish vehicle logistics fleet run need to be empty? Really? Thanks. No, man. No, man, it's a future of technology. It's a future of information sharing. Why can't the map of the Mannheim Louisville be on everybody's app? Why not? Why do you got to stand and look at the wall? Now, I'm not saying that this is the only way to get this information, but I do know that when I was dispatching, I, didn't, I, I couldn't tell the driver where he needed to pull in. And I just, I just, Told him, you know, get there, man. Make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Oh, dang it. I lost it again. That's all right. Let's go to... Let's go to notifications. Uh, somebody was sharing that... Okay, so wait. Do you have to... Do you have to pay to get informed of the new loads? This is a good question. Because you're already... Aren't you already paying... It's just a question. This is just a question, not an accusation. You got to pay extra to hear about the new loads even though you're already paying? It's just a question. It's just a question. I'm just asking the question. Somebody's got to ask the question. That's why it was emailed to me. All right. Uh, so there's a new ship.cars website. Okay. All right. Well, I guess... That's something you can you can look at that. Sure, why not? Uh, hey, okay, this is Nick. He was sharing this um, that I think he appreciated the auto transport software update that I did last Tuesday night. Nick, uh, who is uh, a, a main creator, I do believe, of the Go For It app, appreciated the information sharing that we did last week. And you know what? I appreciate it too. I think it's cool that. I share the information, you share it on your social media, and listen, if you do that, tag me, let me know how I can help. You know that I'm very interested in making sure that you have all the ways to stay loaded. Every great load board should leverage this platform to let you know, again, it's not just business, it is community too, but when we mix the two together... That's right, Gipso Transportation. Get that man a t-shirt. If you've got a business, you, I said it earlier, and I'm going to keep saying it, man. You want to get the help, get the word out? I want to help you help. Help me help you. That's right. Seaport Service is with us tonight. Candy, we've got to get your information on the show. We, got, we, really, we really do. Ty was saying that we need to get more information about Seaport Service out Dude, Ramsey, what's up, Ramsey? Thanks for joining the show, man. Uh, and, in fact, listen, Paladin Enterprises. John Bloom, I used to work with John Bloom when I was in the dispatch office. He's writing some, uh, really, I mean, I, I think, you know what? This is great information. I know that these posts are, are a little long, but it's hard to condense when you got so much to say. Check out Give Me a Break on Paladin Enterprises. This is on Facebook. Great information. No doubt. And you know what the message is all about? I'll just tell you. Here's the encapsulation. Four-wheelers, drivers, they need to give drivers a break, right? Help them out. Don't, don't like, whip in front and, like, hit the brakes. That's crazy. What, do you want to die? Dude, Paladin Enterprises, LLC. Check them out on Facebook. Uh, oh, this was shared by Eben. Yeah, Synthetic Oil Protection. This is on Instagram. Thank you. Thanks for calling out the 7,000 subscribers share. That just happened. Oh, by the way, got a new Facebook page. Go check it out. It used to be Auto Transport Intel. Now it's Auto Trans Intel. Sorry for the inconvenience. There's the at Auto Trans Intel. Also, there's a new LinkedIn page. Auto Transport Intel on LinkedIn. So you can go follow that if you're on LinkedIn. Oh, yeah, that's right. This was last week, Auto Transport Software Update. Man, that was an incredible show. It really was big. Oh, by the way, more shows coming up. Just talked about ECG. 
Uh, this was, you know, I was with Automotive Logistics. That was a month ago. And then here we go. Oh, look at that. What, that's in less than two weeks. ECG in Berlin. Who's going to Berlin? That's going to be a great show. I wish I could go. That'd be cool. You know what? But here's the deal. As we move into talking about Freight Waves. All right. So Freight Waves, next big show, November 13th, 2019. I was lucky enough to meet them at their May show in Atlanta. You're going to want to be in Chicago. That's an amazing show. Man, unbelievable stuff. Bang, all kinds of information. Dude, this is just, dude, they, they got one heck of an organization there sharing mad information. Go ahead and see if you can take that in. I don't even know how, if I could, truckers, brokers, logisticians, forward position inventory, global warehousing, rail, full cycle, concept of modal rotation, capital allocation. This is global market information in freight trucking. And there's a webinar tomorrow. Man, what an organization. Just throwing down mad information. In this webinar, TCA Profitability Program Manager Chris Henry and Freight Waves Kyle Cunningham. Fre Dude, Kyle's on the show tonight. These people don't even sleep. Right? <laughs> right. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do, man. We're going to... Oh, I don't want to share that right now. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Let's do this. We are going to, oh man, I still got Super Highway to do. So hang on, Emily. You're going to be on the sh show soon. But before we do that, we're going to do this. Then we're going to do some Super Highway. Dude, be right back. Historically, buying and selling wholesale vehicles is time-consuming, expensive, and loaded with risk. With ACV, our 20-minute online auctions provide immediate access to thousands of dealers who are ready to buy. Our inspectors complete comprehensive condition reports right at your dealership, from engine fluid levels and OBD2 scans to paint meter readings and tire tread depths with tons of high-res photos. Our condition reports take the guesswork out of wholesale. The ACV team comes to your dealership, inspects the vehicles you'd like to sell and loads them into the app and you're selling vehicles in no time there are no fees for running a vehicle that doesn't sell and you don't have to worry about transportation to a physical auction see how acv can work with your dealership at acvauctions.com seriously you gotta check out acv auctions go to acvauctions.com forward slash ati Go sign up if you're not already there. Now listen, okay, check this out. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do some super highway, okay? The deal is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take a few minutes. I wanna set up some of this information and make sure that, listen, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna pound this into your skull. Freight Waves, go to FreightWaves.com. Why do you go to Freight Waves? Global industry trucking news media resource information. All right, go to FreightWaves.com, and here's what you do, right? You scroll down. Check this out. Dude, that's a lot of news. Are you with me? That's a lot of news. Okay, market information, sonar, articles, company earnings, American shipper. It just keeps going. I'm serious. Have you seen this? You've seen this. I know you have. I know you've seen it. You just want to meet the folks because you've already, you've like read over half of this, right? You're like, so overloaded. Dude, Maritime, there's a podcast. What the truck? Dude, seriously. Okay, let's go back to the top. All right, so Sonar. What is Sonar? We're going to talk more about Sonar tonight. You can request a demo. This is freight market dashboard information. Look at that. Wait till I run the promo. You're going to want to stick around because in about an hour, check that out. What a what a teaser. You have to stick around an hour <laughs> to see the Sonar promo teaser. You're going to want to do that, though. All right, so Sonar, tons of information, tools, resources, no joke. Dude, go to YouTube. I, this just came to the, look at this, brand new today. This is a Sonar 101 video. It just came out today. Crazy. Um, you go to Freight Waves. This is the YouTube channel. This is look at look at this. V these are their videos, just churning out content. Dude, Kyle's face is on like half of those. Dude, what's going on, Kyle? Are you taking over the channel? Okay, that's a joke. 
No, no. There are so many people. Freight Waves is, is a huge organization. By the way, Freight Waves sonar did not happen in a vacuum. All right. Freight Waves is a Freight Waves sonar. They partnered with DAT. You guys know DAT load board, number one load board in freight trucking, I think. Okay. Speculation, allegedly. And then Nodal, Nodal Exchange. This is like serious market analysis, techie, hardcore, number crunching geniuses. You take Nodal plus DAT plus Freight Waves and you get Sonar. Ding! That's crazy. It, it is. It's insane. It's so awesome. But we're going to learn more about it tonight. Uh, let's see here. Oh, here, let me do this. Bear with me, man. I got, I got screens going crazy. Okay. All right. So that's the super highway. Enough said. Uh, okay. Here's what we need to do. By the way, freight waves. <laughs> freight waves question of the day. I've said freight waves. How many times have I said freight waves? The CTS business coaching question of the day is how many times has Jay said freight waves? Okay. What's the name? This is the real question of the day. What is the name? of the freight waves global industry market data and analysis tool i just talked about it what is the name of the freight waves data tool that you can tap into it's a partnership between dat nodal exchange and freight waves what is the answer oh man i should have like the uh well if i had game show music then i would you know, I'd get demonetized, so I can't have that. Jay, are your live Tuesdays rebroadcasted? Yes. On Auto Transport Intel on YouTube, all you need to do, while we're waiting for the uh, question of the day answer to come in, uh, all you need to do, thank you so much for the question. This seems rehearsed, but it's not. Uh, you go to my YouTube channel, just type in Auto Transport Intel, and bang, it is Video City up here, all right? No joke. So I want you to do that. Okay, by the way, you know why we're here? Let's see. What we're going to do is I need to do this. Okay. I'm changing the screen. Oh, where did he go? You know what? I always do that. There he is. Okay, so listen. Here's what we're going to do. In a second, we are going to be back with Emily. It's now 833. Emily, I hope you're ready. And the answer to the CTS business coaching question of the day is sonar freight waves sonar so listen guys stick around i'm going to be right back with emily of freight waves you aren't going to want to miss it welcome to this tuesday edition of freight waves now i'm emily zinc brokers we have some great advice for you today that's coming up but first we start with our carrier update Kyle Cunningham here with another carrier update. Let's talk about what's happening on the roads all across the USA. First off, let's go over to Nebraska. Let's take a look at North Platte. Huge moves in volatility on the outbound rejections as of yesterday. Love to hear what's going on out there. Leave a comment in the box below. And as always, stay tuned to Freight Waves Now. Donnie Gilbert joins me now. And brokers, we have some advice for you. Get out of your comfort zone. What do you mean by that? Emily watched Zach's trick when yesterday give a great update on what was going on with tender rejection rates. Throughout the last couple weeks of July, we see them just keep falling in decline, just keep coming down for both reefer and drive-in. But you have to keep trying. And as I said, get out of your comfort yeah. zone. And you'll eventually learn those markets and you'll be successful. Yeah, great advice there from Donnie Gilbert. And of course, you are watching us on YouTube. So hit subscribe, follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. We hope everyone has a great Tuesday. Okay, so welcome back to the show. Now, make sure we can see and hear you okay. Emily, can you see me and hear me okay? Yes. Can you see and hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. And I think we're good. And also, so question for the audience. Can you guys see and hear us okay? And I ask these questions because we're live, right? Anything can happen. I've had audio and video hiccups before, but I, I think we're okay. So welcome to the show, Emily. 
Thank you for having me. I love your energy. This is exciting. Awesome. I was like, oh, I don't know if I'll be able to stay up that late, but you're definitely keeping me up with the energy, so uh, I like it. Thank you so much. Well, I know that, listen, it's it's not lost on me that, I mean, I'm dealing with, with freight waves. You guys are a professional media organization. I mean, mm -hmm. global trucking industry information. So I'm humbled to have you here, and I really appreciate you taking the time to spend on auto transport intel tonight so i mean thank you so much no problem yeah i i wanted to be sure i'm in our headquarters right now so okay. behind me you really can't get the best view of it okay. but we have those video walls that people see our freight waves now and other content craig show fuller speed ahead he shoots in front of these video walls so i thought that would be a great backdrop for tonight well it is a great and i appreciate you doing that too because i know no that i mean it's you know you're in chattanooga right yep Okay, so it's 930 your time. So, you know, to come down to the office at night, take the time to mm -hmm. give that look. I really do appreciate that. It means a lot. No problem at all. You made the joke that Kyle doesn't sleep. Kyle doesn't sleep. He <laughs> does work very hard. So, yeah, that, that was true. That was a good observation. Well, I, you know, I actually, not until that moment did I notice, like, that was... That was really me in real time. Like, whoa, Kyle is all over the video page. I didn't even know that. Yeah, he does every day. So in our freight waves now, we usually have a carrier update, a shipper update, and then a broker broker update. So it kind of caters to every different group that's watching us. He does a carrier update every single day because as he'll talk about, he's sold sonar. And then we found out, wow, this guy's really good on camera too. So he does the carrier segment every single day. So that's why you see his face every single day. And he was a driver, right? Yes, he drove too. And he has some crazy driving stories. So he really fully shows what this industry is all about and kind of what our company is all about. It You could do whatever you want to do here, which is a really cool thing. So perfect segue. So yeah. why don't you, for anybody that doesn't know what Freight Waves in, is, please, will you let us know? Well, I think a lot of people the easiest comparison is Bloomberg. That's what you always hear our CEO, Craig Fuller say, we are the Bloomberg of freight. So when you think of Bloomberg, you think they have news and they have data. So we have our data with Sonar, which Kyle will talk about, and we also have our news. Um, I think it is the most fascinating story. We never intended to be a media entity. Um, the reason we are is because Craig tells the story a lot better than me, but I just, I find it so fascinating. Tom Mallon will be on later talking about freight futures. And when Craig came up with this idea, when the Freight Waves team came up with the idea of freight futures, they were trying to pitch it to other industry publications. And no one was getting what they were trying to pitch. No one really was latching onto it. No one really wanted to write about it. Mm -hmm. So they even tried to get public relation firms to write about. They thought maybe these PR firms would do us justice and they'll be able to write about it. They got turned down by all those firms, but one of them gave them the idea how about you write about futures? How about you write about what you're trying to accomplish? Because it is a tough concept wow. if you're not used to talking about it. Mm -hmm. So they hired a writer. Um, our first writer, his name is Brian Strait. He's a brilliant man. He had been in the transportation industry for decades. So great hire on their part. And he was just writing articles, but not just about freight futures, but he was writing articles about the industry as a whole. And I think Craig said when it really took off is there was a hurricane and Brian was on vacation. And so he wrote an article under Brian's name and Craig had spent some time doing hurricane logistics when he was at us express. Um, and so he had firsthand knowledge and he wrote this article that just took off online. There were so many eyeballs on our website that hadn't been there before. And people just wanted more and more content. So, from there, in less than two years, we now have 30 full-time journalists, and that number is constantly growing. They're all around the world. They're not just writing about freight. They're writing about intermodal. They're writing about maritime. They're writing about air cargo. Everything to do with logistics we have covered, um, which we don't just talk about it. I think we also tell stories in a great way, and that's why people want to read it. And now we're the most read logistics website in the entire world. So really wow. just from trying to talk about freight futures, they developed this amazing media entity. So that kind of is what captured my attention to want to work here. That is amazing. And by yeah. the way, so some of the things that you said, I, I've been following closely since, uh, I'm, actually it was about a year ago. I think I think you guys started going live on a regular basis. Was it like November last year? Wasn't that? 
Um, with the GoPro or with Freight Waves Now you're talking Something about? Like, yeah, right? Yes. Um, that was shot on a GoPro. It was just an idea that our CEO, Craig Fuller, had in his mind. Hey, let's let's talk about this. So real time, well, near time data. So every day new sonar data comes up and it really does help you make informed decisions. That's the point of it. It's to be transparent in the industry. So why not make a show about it? Why not give brokers the information they need? Why not give carrier shippers the information they need? So we were shooting the show off a of GoPro and it worked and it took off because no one else was doing TV. And then probably I say about four months ago we added lights and camera and a little higher production quality and every day it gets better but it, it's just one way to help get the word out which kyle will talk about is our main product is sonar so it's just a great way to show people how they can utilize it sonar okay so to go back all right the hurricane article you talked about can you yes. put a month and a year on that because i'm curious year and a half no everything's happening so fast yes That's the thing. um i don't think people realize I how would fast say, this is happening i i think it was a year ago okay um I believe I, that. it can't be longer than that right. um i know their first round of vc funding came probably a year and a half ago it mm -hmm. everything it's crazy so even fast. the way we grow as a company probably in my five months of being here i'd say 30 people walk through the door, new people, and it just continues to grow on every single team we have here. We just are continuing to expand as a company, which is an extremely exciting time to be a part of this. And right. more people are hopping on board as we move. Um, and so, and that's thing too, I know that uh, along with the media, there is Sonar. And we're gonna, yes. we're gonna get to, we're gonna get to Sonar. Sonar is <laughs> tough to unpack. How would it you is. describe yes. Sonar to people? Um, when you think of the Bloomberg terminal, it is basically based off of that. It's a model of that. Um, I think it's so fascinating because we track stuff every day. Like if I order a dress and it's being shipped from a warehouse in New York City, I could see where my dress is coming from and when. If I order a pizza, I could see when that pizza is coming and when, but you never really could see where trucks were in terms of freight. Um, and this really has changed the game in terms of all of that. So I was explaining like that in layman's terms. I, I know it's probably not the high level stuff. Craig's probably like, oh, that's, that's <laughs> not the data that we're talking about. But I think it's the best way for people to really grasp how game changing this is, how big this is for the industry. And it, the biggest word you hear around it is transparency. It's all about being transparent and it's it's for everyone. It's not just for the carrier. It's not just for the shipper. It's for everyone to use and everyone to use to their advantage to help with their game plan, their daily strategy. And to help, so uh, to help explain this message kind of daily, right? Because yeah. this is this is like trying to to jam a whole buffet into your mouth at one time. You can't do it. You yes, got to take no. you know small bites. Anyways, I think that that's how I see like Freight Waves now. Many of the other shows. You get you start with kind of some weather. Okay, we all know what weather is. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we got some weather, and now we're going to go into some market analysis. We're going to talk about markets. And by the way, that map, when you look at it closely, you're like, hey, what that I see the U.S. outline, but I'm not seeing states. I'm seeing yeah. what am I seeing? You right? What would you call those? Um, those markets. I would ask Kyle. I think those are considered they're in markets. Uh -huh. I Kyle would be a better person. Yeah, he is uh, I know. We got to tread lightly. He is the sonar man. Um, but it it it's all color coded to mean stuff. It's <laughs> once you start <laughs> learning exactly. um, what everything means is that's when you really start to utilize it. And he does a very good job on Freight Waves now of going through motion by motion, showing certain markets every day. What are the hot markets that trucks should move to? Where should brokers be looking? Where should shippers be looking? Um, we don't want to give it all away because it is such right. a robust platform. Oh, we don't want to give all the information away every single day. That's why you need a Sonar subscription because it really is a game changer for businesses. And you do hear great testimonials about it. But we do give you little snippets every single day. So we shoot that show around 10 o'clock. It goes out. We do a little editing. It goes out around 1 o'clock every single day on our YouTube channel. So Freight Waves, just search us on YouTube really still valuable especially if you're on the west coast your day is just starting when we put it out at one so as you move kind of throughout the area throughout the areas of the country uh, your day is getting a little later but if you're on the west coast definitely check us out because it is very valuable information any any time of day oh i i totally agree and in fact so you've got right monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday yes you have freight waves now yes right okay 
So that's the first thing we do. Um, you mentioned what the truck before that is our podcast. Right. We have two Jim guys, Duner, Chad and Dooner. They, yeah. it is, if you have not seen it yet, it is a mix of up to the minute news mixed with just theatrics. They're both crazy. There's a lot of cowbell if you like cowbell. Um, but it is, you also get a lot of insight. You get a lot of people both within the building and outside the building who come on their show. And the cool thing is not only is it a podcast, it's a video podcast. So if you want to just listen, you could get it on Apple podcast, but if you want to watch live with us, you could do that on YouTube. You could do it on Facebook. You do it on LinkedIn, not a lot of video podcasts going right now. So they're really on the cutting edge of stuff and it is live up to the minute. So it's same like your show. If you want to comment, you want to write in great interaction. Oh, I there. love the, yeah, the live yeah. chat. Hey, Tim Dooner's in here with us. <laughs> Is awesome, he? yeah. Oh, What's that's up, great. Tim? Hey, Dooner. Yeah, so he's he and Chad are with one of our video journalists um, piloting a show right now. They're in Chicago. So, so much awesome. going on right now with, yeah, Freight Waves. And then Kyle will probably talk about his show on Wednesday night. So that's coming up. Everyone will want to tune in 7 o'clock tomorrow. Okay. Um, that's called The Night Shift. The night it's shift. just basically dives. If you really leave tonight being like, I want to know more about Sonar, the night shift is where you're going to go. Kyle will break it down for you. He might even open the phone lines um, if people have questions or even want to get signed up for Sonar. Um, it's fun, interactive show. And if you really want to kind of get dig it, dig a bit deeper and ask questions, that show, the night shift tomorrow is. And I, I saw that. So I was watching some. Yeah. And yeah, he's like, you know, we'll take your questions and then keep talking about information. Yeah. Okay, so help me out. So we got Freight Waves now every day. Yes. We got... Uh, the night shift on Wednesday nights. How about, mm -hmm. I've seen Fuller Speed Ahead. Fuller Speed Ahead. That is Craig Fuller's show. So okay. perfect name, Fuller Speed Ahead. Yeah. Um, he will shoot those. You know, we try to put them out Monday through Thursday. Be looking for them. And what's really neat about that is Craig knows so many people throughout oh, the industry. Yeah, he great is interviews. so well connected yeah. just because his father started U.S. Express. Mm -hmm. He's had successful businesses himself. His, his family's just engulfed oh, in the I, truck yeah in yeah. the trucking industry so he will have the movers and the shakers of the industry come through and he'll always ask them hey do you want to sit down and do an interview and you never know what they're going to talk about um it could be just business it could be about sports it could be anything so he always keeps it lively and entertaining he interviewed his dad actually I saw a few that. Weeks ago. it was amazing it was so funny oh, wow. because he he's like you know what cut some of it. that's too long and i said it's not too <laughs> long in terms of tv that's great some stuff is long but it was just such a fascinating story to hear it was. he's like maybe because i heard it so many times but to any industry outsider the story of how his dad started us express and just what it took to get there and how he continues and his family continues to build the company today it just it was incredibly insightful and that's what you'll get from a lot of the fuller speed aheads he'll he knows what questions to ask because he knows these people and he knows kind of the next move they're going to make so he always asks the right questions which is very entertaining so be looking for the fuller speed aheads we usually release them monday through thursday and then he he does a few other shows so if you want to dive if you have sonar and you already want to dive a bit deeper into it it's called this week in sonar and every mm. week they launch new applications new data sets sonar just it doesn't just say stagnant they continually change it they continually add things it just impresses me I'm like where are you getting this data from it's just more and more each week so on fridays and i think it goes out in a newsletter on saturdays if you're looking for that sometime over the weekend he kind of breaks down what's coming up this week in sonar so what are the new features to be looking for and then every friday to every friday morning he does something called the weekly rate update just going over how the market is right now with one of our writers so he, it's, he gets in there he does a lot of stuff with us and it's just extremely insightful because when he talks people will listen um because he knows a thing or two about the industry yeah no and i i got that i mean really like it is it's, it's so much information i think that's why i like the fuller speed ahead format yes. it should be a longer show so yes. that you can get to know somebody uh, it's like the actor's studio of trucking execs, you know, just, oh, yeah. you get, you get to, and, and the stories that his dad was telling, I, I heard some of those hooks of how things happened and the challenges. I mean, you know, uh, I, I, a couple of the moments there, I was sweating it out for him too. I thought, <laughs> my gosh, that sounds crazy. 
Exactly. And it's, it's just neat to hear the backstories of all these places. And what's really cool is I don't think a lot of people realize how many logistic companies are in our backyard right here in Chattanooga, mm -hmm. Tennessee. So I think he does an amazing job of highlighting that by bringing these local people on one right after another, he'll say another local Chattanooga business. So I think it really is making a name for Chattanooga and the logistics industry. A lot of people May not think of Chattanooga, but if you are in the freight industry, it is top of mind because we do have Covenant. We do have U.S. Express here. Um, but if you're outside the Chattanooga area, I think he does a great job of tying it in to show, look at all these companies we have here and we're continuing to grow. And not just logistics companies, but just startups as a whole. It's just, it's really cool to see Chattanooga turn into a hotbed for startups. That is, that's really cool. Um, yeah. Also, I know that, I mean, the email goes out. Uh, yes. There are so many ways that Freight Waves is keeping people informed. Yeah. It, I mean, it's right. It, it, it is in, in the amount of time that we're talking about. Really, mm -hmm. if, we're, if we said one year ago that I don't I don't know what you had then that you don't have now. But I think it, I think it's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I, isn't I it mean, crazy it was... how fast it's happened. Yes. Yeah. Um, even in the close to five months I've been here, we have just changed everything in terms of TV. We've added so many writers, we've acquired American Shipper. So that has just upped our game with our online presence and our online content even more. Um, you had mentioned Freight Waves Live in Chicago on the 12th and 13th at right. McCormick Place. Yeah, talk about that. Yes. Yeah. If you have not gotten your tickets yet, definitely do that. I have not been, but I hear that it is unlike anything you've ever been to, any type of conference you've ever been to, filled with LEDs, energy. I'm looking forward to, they do seven minute demos. So these right. companies have seven minutes to demo whatever their product is, the latest and greatest thing in technology. And I just, you never know, you may be seeing the next big piece of tech right there on the Freight Waves live stage. So I'm really looking forward to that. But you also um, mentioned how Sonar is, you know, there's so much to it and it's so robust. The biggest thing I would say probably is Sonar 5.0 is being released when we are in Chicago. Oh, wow. um, I That's hear neat. there's 3D maps, incredible graphics, wow. just the visuals are out of this world. So uh, I have not seen it. Um, I've heard great things about it. And if it's anything like we have now, I just can't imagine it getting any better. But wow. so that will be unveiled at Freight Waves Live in Chicago, the 12th and 13th of November. So if you have not bought your ticket yet, just head to FreightWaves.com and all the information's right there. Um, I want to say that I, you know, I was lucky enough. That's where I met a lot of yeah. you guys. I was, I, I was. You're in Atlanta. I was you in said Atlanta in May. Very cool. And it is an awesome show. Uh, there is clearly something different going on here. Um, it, you know, it, it had a lot. Of, you've, you've been talking about energy. You've <laughs> brought energy, and that show has energy. Yeah. There, there is a lot happening. You can, you can feel that this is you know this is this is cutting edge trucking information technology leaders and those seven minute demos are awesome are they because that, yeah, i mean i've watched videos but you you've imagine? been there firsthand yeah i mean just you know do it hit your hit your stopwatch and try to pitch your company in seven minutes maybe rotating a team member <laughs> showing slides and getting yeah. from start to finish in seven minutes almost impossible yeah well, I'm very excited and I know people awesome. just keep asking what's going to be going on there. And it just, I mean, we have a ton of videos, promo videos on our YouTube page of past events, but mm. as I'm told, each event is better and better. So if you think the videos are great on YouTube, just imagine this event being even better. And so that's the thing too. Not only is all of this happening, you're covering yes. all this information, your company is growing, these great things are happening, but also the way it is really helping many folks in the trucking community. That's one thing I do understand about Sonar is that when you when you do understand it, when you can, you, you can eat off all of the meat on the bone mm -hmm. that's happening there, you, in fact, that's what I like during the show, You'll hear Kyle or, or someone say, you know, if you're a carrier, if you're a shipper, if you're a yes. broker, here's the tip. Yeah. This is the market. You should know this right now. You don't want to be in this market or you do want to be in this market or you need to move your truck. But instead of guessing, stop guessing because the information's right here on Sonar. 
And people always ask me, do people actually use that information? Mm. And I always like to tell this story. I had a neighbor back in high school. So that was years and years ago, reach out to me on social media and say, hey, my fiance is a broker in Chicago. He watches you guys every single day and makes his business decisions based off of freight waves now. So just hearing that from somebody I have not seen in years, um, the fact that not just he, but his coworkers watch us on the regular, it just, it, it was like, okay, we are really on to something. We are helping people make informed decisions. And as we continue to build our business and build our product, it's, I just, not enough people yet have heard about Sonar. So as it continues to be a snowball effect and just pick up, pick up, pick up, it will become, I think, a household name in the freight industry, but it's just all about getting everyone on board with it. And I think when you're on board with it, you're like, what did I do when I didn't have this? Why, why did I not have this for so long? Right. Yeah. And I agree with you. I think, cause I've already want of the shows I've seen, I've already learned a little bit about the markets cause there is a pattern. There's yeah. some markets just seem to have just like in car hauling. Well, I know, oh, yeah. I know different areas that there's always going to be a lot of uh, inventory and capacity and then other areas. But what's neat too, one of the things I like about your show is I've learned, you know, tight capacity, loose capacity, uh, outbound tender reject. Yes. I actually know what an outbound tender there reject is. There we go. Is. Kyle, Kyle might quiz you in a bit about that. Oh, yeah. No. So it, it, it is, it, it was hard to learn at first. I'll admit that yeah, because it's it all is. acronyms that we make up, all things oh, that we make gosh, up. But yes. once you catch on to it, it's just everyday vocabulary. Those, yeah, the, right. Those like eight character terms you'll see on the screen, like <laughs> USDA dot yep. lr4 you know hey have you seen the usda lr4 absolutely the us <laughs> right i'm sure that happens around the office all the time it does yes yeah Great. you hear oh try all those <laughs> little things all the time yeah it's awesome but essentially that is that's that's the takeaway i want people to know and we're going to dive more into it is that what's neat is is next when we talk to tom tom is going to dive into I, I believe he's going to help us understand the philosophy and mechanics of freight futures. Yeah, which, he is the man to talk about that too. Uh, yes, he will be able to explain it to you. I, I think it. You do need someone to explain it in layman's terms and really get excited. And nothing makes Tom more excited than freight futures. So I, I, I love know. listening to him talk about it. And it is an amazing concept. If you could wrap your head around it and you could get behind it you'll you'll listen just stay tuned your viewers need to stay on for this because you're like why hasn't anyone ever thought of this before it it is truly innovative it, yeah. it's very innovative and then what's cool so then kyle's going to come back on and show us I, i'm not exactly sure what we're going to do but we're going to talk more about sonar yeah because i guess that's what i mean day in day out that's what he's doing that's right? his thing that's it so. he went from selling sonar to then talking about it uh, on camera full time so he just was so good at it and, and it, yeah and again had started as a driver and i yes I, it, isn't that great to share that you know we hear that oh you know if you can dream it and think it you can be it well there there is truth right i was a oh. dispatcher Kyle was a driver. You were doing something before this too. Yeah. There is there is a path. It may not be straightforward, but there is a path. Yeah. And it's one of those things, especially with freight waves. If you want to work here and you want to get a foot in the door, they will listen to you. They will take your ideas. And if the big thing we always talk about is intellectual curiosity. You don't have to be the smartest person in the entire world, but you have to want to learn. You have to want to know what's going on here. And I think I like to tell people all the time, they're always like, how do you like your new job? Because I worked in TV news for about 10 years and I don't ever want to dog on TV news, but I always say, you know what? It's really nice to be surrounded with smart people. These people that I work yeah. with every single day, the best of the best in the industry, people who were in billion dollar companies before are now part of freight waves. People who have been in the industry for decades are now a part of freight waves. So I, just feel so great to walk in every day and everyone is the cream of the crop here and it's a really good feeling that is awesome wow yeah. um i'm excited to see you then what, what happens next i want let me ask you this you mentioned if anybody's you know wants to contact freight waves about yeah. job opportunities etc what's a great way for people to do that so if you just go to freightwaves.com, you'll see we do have a certain section there at hiring. We are always okay. hiring, um, actively hiring, especially people, journalists, industry, 
analysts, data science is always expanding. They got to keep Sonar going. So there are so many, my department, I'm looking for video people. I'm looking for producers. I'm looking for everyone. Um, So we have a lot of local people, but the neat thing is I, I forget Craig made a spreadsheet and it was, it was just filled with people from outside of Chattanooga. And you wouldn't think that, but we are a destination workplace. People want to come work for us. So it's always so exciting when we bring someone from outside the area, because it just goes to show people are learning about our brand and they're wanting to come work at FreightWave. So definitely you could check it out. We have a lot of job openings right now. We'll continue to post job openings as we grow. And if you want to see any of our content, it's as easy as going to FreightWaves.com. You already showed it earlier. It's just filled with stories you will not find that much coverage anywhere else from maritime to air cargo to anything to do with supply chain and logistics freightwaves.com and then if you scroll down a bit we do some updated videos but everything lives on our youtube channel right now we are in the process of getting an app oh i was gonna ask you that okay yeah that makes so hopefully come november Absolutely. fingers crossed we will right. be able to have our own app because that is our goal freight waves tv we want to be the first streaming tv network dedicated to freight wow and so you have to have an app to put on your roku tv your any kind of smart tv xbox so mm-hmm. be looking for that in the future but right now everything lives on our youtube page um linkedin is a great way to find us too just freight waves we um are one of 10,000 companies in the entire world who got the chance to test LinkedIn's live feature. So oh, we're a awesome. part of a beta test. Awesome. It is incredible. The What the Truck guys, they really thrive on that because people love to hop on LinkedIn, ask them questions. So if you want to know where to watch What the Truck, I would say go to LinkedIn, um, 3.30 Central Time, or sorry, 3.30 Eastern Time, your Central Time, we're Eastern Time on Mondays, and then one o'clock Eastern Time on Fridays. I would probably pop on LinkedIn because you could have a discussion with other people, watch the What the Truck Guys, and definitely have a laugh. So all of our content's listed on YouTube, LinkedIn, find us everywhere. And we just got a couple links here in the live chat. Um, So freightwaves.com. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Freightwaves.com forward slash hiring. So they're perfect. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Great makes job. life so much easier yeah yeah so check it out kimberly thank you for sharing those tim he's li- is in the live chat tim thanks for Perfect. being in the live chat emily <laughs> thanks so much for joining us no problem thank you for having me yeah and you this guys are going to learn so much about futures you never thought you could learn before and oh man i'm excited for kyle sonar so yeah it's time looking to, forward to it ready to buck listen if you're just joining the show buckle in because we're going to learn mm-hmm. a lot more emily thank you so much no problem thank you take care thanks for joining us tonight thanks okay bye-bye all right, so hey guys, listen, I am going to um, I'm going to let Emily go, and then what we're going to do is we're going to be right back with Kyle. No, Tom. Tom. <laughs> hey Jay, it's your show. You don't even know the schedule. Listen, let me work on that. Let me check the cue cards. I'm going to be right back. I've been around trucking my entire life. My dad took U.S. Express Public in 1994. I was 15 years old, and I remember wanting to learn how the stock market worked. So I learned a lot about them because it was obviously a big event in my dad's life. About 2014, I was doing some day trading on the side. I was watching CNBC, and I remember CNBC flashing the Baltic Dry Index up. And it struck me that they would always refer to global shipping as a barometer to general economic activity. And they would sort of mention freight and trucking, but never really dive into it. To an entrepreneur, when you're looking for new ideas, this seemed like it was right. As I learned more about financial markets, I thought this is a market that is massive, but there's no financial market for it. There wasn't that futures market or Ford market where financial speculators and traders could used it as a barometer of of freight and and trade. And there was no risk management tools. Regardless of of what futures do and how successful they are, the freight market is going to be more transparent. And I I think that's a pretty powerful thing. And I think it extends what Ben and I talked about when we first sort of envisioned this business was that we can help take data and inform a more transparent market. All right. Well, 
welcome back to Auto Transport Intel. Now, listen, let me change the title here because, listen, I got Tom Mallon of Freightways with me here tonight. Tom, can you see me and hear me okay? I can see you and hear you fine, Jay. Thank you. Wow, awesome. And listen, everyone out there in TV land, can you see us and hear us okay? Please let us know. But I, I'm, it looks like everything's normal to me. So, listen, Tom, thank you for joining the show tonight. Oh, it's my pleasure. So always, it's always fun to talk about futures. Doesn't matter what time, day or night. So that's what everybody always says. They say, <laughs> "I love talking about futures. I can't get enough." So what are we talking it, about? Yeah, so we're, we're we're talking about like a first of its kind product for a huge industry that had no way to manage volatility in trucking freight rates, and so we solved a big, big problem. Okay. All right, so right there, I remember, see, so I met you in May, and we, and, and you know mm -hmm. what, and thank you for your graciousness in May. Listen, you helped make this possible. Me and you being here right now is partly your fault. <laughs> exactly. You get so, a lot of credit. It was, it was great to meet you, and you asked me if I was Craig Fuller. I am not Craig. <laughs> That's right, I did. Okay, I didn't know what I was talking about. I, all I knew was Freight Waves is here. I've got to meet freight waves and you know, and I started knocking over table and pushing people. No, I didn't do that. So you, and I saw, I just happened to see you on the way in. I saw Dean and you, right. And we started talking, Yep. man, that's awesome. Okay. So anyways, back to where we were just a little trip down memory lane. So there it is. We're meeting and you start talking about futures market and volatility. Tom, what are you talking about? What you trying to pull on me? Yeah, so, I mean, if, if you look at the freight futures market, I mean, you know, I mean, if you go back in time, you know, back to 2014, uh, you've seen rates, I mean, up through the middle of last year, climb about 60%. Since then, they've fallen about 60%. I mean, it's, it's just a massively volatile market. And in other markets, commodity markets, um, that type of volatility has an instrument, a futures contract, where you can manage that exposure. Trucking freight, which is a $730 billion market, had none of that, so. Right, okay, so there you said something important, right? This is where the fleet owner goes, what did he say? Managing risk and exposure to changes in the market rates, right? That is correct. Okay, that, your, that's the goal. exposure. Right. That is the goal. Because if we can't control the fluctuations, all these wild fluctuations, then we have a business problem. But this is a way to manage that volatility. Is that right? That's correct. That's correct. So it's, it's, a, it's a way to smooth out cash flow. It's a way to, you know, manage expectations around earnings. And so, you know, it, it's, it's a vital tool in managing your business. So now that you've got someone's attention, Okay, you've got the concept, then you have to move forward to show them how this is going to work. That's correct. Right? And I'm happy to show how it is going to work. <laughs> so, this is going to work? It is, it is <laughs> working. It, it's working it right now. Working. So, I mean, the, 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 the futures contracts themselves, they went live back on March 29th. Um, there's been trading. There are, real, there are real hedges in the market that have been put on. Um, so it's a tool which is being used by shippers, carriers, and brokers today. Right, hedges. All right, tell me what, so what, when you said there are hedges, what, he, what's a hedge? So a hedge is a way, uh, it's, a, it's a financial means to protect operational risk. So you use a futures contract, which is a financial contract, to manage the exposure that you have in either moving freight, contracting with a, uh, with, with, with a, uh, a carrier, so you protect the up or the down move in, in rates. Okay. So at this point, um, do you want to share some information? I will share. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. I'm. You know, this is. I love this. I love this. Uh, this presentation information you're giving because it is. It's kind of out there. It's not out there. I meaning it's there, but it's not out there. Out there. It just seems that way at first. And I can also, by the way, I have, you sent me a copy, so I can share my desktop if you want me to. Can you see the screen right now? No. 
So there's a share button in the menu bar down below. By the way, this is live TV, everybody. So, uh, so there's a share button down below, and you click the share button. And if you if you click it, and um, you'll it's I think you're gonna click it on your screen. And again, if you don't if you don't see it, um, I'll click mine and I'll share mine. I see. Okay, I should be sharing. So if you hover, like I, I move my, I'm moving my mouse around, and when I move my mouse around, it starts to show the menu bar at the bottom of the screen, and there's a share, this kind of a green share box, and that's what you. Yep, click. I'm sharing it. Oh, there we go. Here we go. All right. Now you want to go ahead and move that stuff off because now we're seeing that, and that's okay. So then, what you're going to do is you're going to share your desktop or your presentation and yeah and then we've got like mine i've got a, i've got a pdf and i know you've also got a powerpoint um so however you want to do that and by the way i you know what in that screen too i, I want to talk about that screen too how there's three markets there we go now we got yep and i see i think that's the second slide okay so do me a there, favor. We yeah, there we go trucking freight futures bang very good. So, apologies for that, but uh, so, trucking freight futures. Um, just real quickly, um, we oh, talked gee. about, the problem, and the problem is really an opportunity. So, the trucking market itself is about a seven hundred and thirty billion dollar market. Um, it is bigger, if you look at the slide, than the uh, oil and refined product markets. It's bigger than the agricultural markets. It's bigger than electricity. Um, so it's, it's, it's a huge market um, with, up, with no way up until March 29th to manage exposure to volatility in freight rates. Um, futures markets are interesting from the standpoint that um, they operate by a multiple, meaning that a single futures contract, when it is traded, uh, will be bought and sold multiple times. So there's a multiplier effect. So our 730 in dollar trucking market, in essence, could be as big as three trillion dollars. So a massive, massive market wow. um, with you know with lots of volatility and lots of risks. Okay, so yeah, that sounds big. So com yeah, so comparing that to other commodity markets where there are notable futures contracts, you have crude oil, uh, which futures markets were introduced back in 1983. Um, it's a $420 billion underlying market. You have natural gas, which was introduced in 1992. It's about a $140 billion market. Um, and then electricity, which is about another $400 billion underlying market. All of these commodity markets have futures contracts, which are traded against it. Um, and this is important to note because when you look at commodities, about 84% of commodities um, that are moved via surface transportation have futures contracts against them. So you can manage exposure to price risk in commodities that are moved via trucks, via intermodal, via other surface type of transportation. Also, what we've heard from, you know, from the marketplace is about 40% of all of the S&P 500 companies cited transportation costs as the number one risk earnings in the past 12 months so right, again i've read that cost is a huge factor in risk to earnings uh in publicly traded companies and then if you look at this past year you know the amount of companies that have exited trucking companies that have exited the market mm. it's been what happened in 2016 so yeah risk that could be managed you know with with futures contracts yeah awesome I talked about volatility before in the introduction what we have here is uh, is a a graph of prices. These are these are actual um, uh, uh, freight prices from GAT Solutions. Um, GAT is the provider of the underlying prices for our indexes, which we use to sell the contracts. So if you look at the, the movement in prices up and down nationally, and then regionally in the east, the west, and the south, uh, from 2014. Through this year, you just see a massive up, a massive down, but you see lots of fluctuation in between. That's volatility. 
And this is what volatility and volatility impacts earning. And so the goal of using futures would be to smooth out that, you know, the ups and the downs in the spikes that you see in this chart. All right. So what causes volatility? Lots of things cause volatility. Um, I mean, today, Trump is probably the biggest cause of volatility in the market. He tweets, the markets move. You know, trade policy is a huge thing. And you've seen the tariffs impact the flow of trade. You know, it's shifted from the West Coast now to the East Coast. And that's had a big impact on freight prices um, in the East. Weather is a huge thing. Last, last month, we had Dorian you know, hit the, you know, skirt up the East Coast of the U.S. It impacted the US, the East Coast corridor, um, uh, particularly freight in and out of the Atlanta market. It impacted, you know, on an upward uh, move and then on a downward move at the back end of September. Um, and then Amazon is a big influencer of, of everything that's freight. Correct. So just to give you a little bit of a, an idea of what's going on in the trucking freight futures market. So... I mentioned we launched the futures contracts back in March. Okay. March 20 was the first time a trucking freight futures contract ever traded. Wow. It was on the national average. It traded at $1.34 per mile. Um, recently, we've had two very large hedges. Uh, we had one hedge, 50,000 uh, miles, which is 50 futures contracts, uh, take place on the Los Angeles to Dallas line. Uh, and then also uh, on the uh, Los Angeles to Seattle uh, lane as well. So we've got 65,000 miles worth of uh, futures contract open interest, which is important because that is risk that is being managed by the market today. Um, and we are building out the, uh, the platform for trading. So we've got a number of shippers, carriers, and brokers which are on the platform that can uh, be in the market and can trade futures contracts. So what do you need to build a, a futures market? Number one, you need a big market and you need a volatile market. And we touched, we touched on that. You also need a reliable price by which futures contracts can be settled. So we partnered with Back Solutions. They provide a daily settlement price or an index price uh, for each of the 11 futures contract markets that have been listed. And then we listed these futures contracts on a regulated futures exchange called the Nodal Exchange. They're regulated by the Commodity Futures Trading uh, Commission, which oversees all futures trading um, in, in the U.S. Um, and then freight waves, we, are, we bring tribal knowledge. We bring the insight, analysis, and data whereby shippers, carriers, and brokers can make informed trading decisions on what's going on in the, in the freight markets. So who's impacted? Shippers. You know, there's 20,000 shippers out there that spend more than 10 million a year on freight. They are impacted by volatility. You got the trucking companies, the carriers, 4,500 plus companies with over 20 million in revenue at risk to volatility in spot freight rates. And then the brokers, another 1,600 of them, 10 million in revenue per year which could be impacted by upward and downward movements in spot freight rates. So the contracts themselves, um, you talked about the map with Emily. This is a different map. Uh, this map shows the corridors and the lanes which have been listed by on the nodal exchange for trade off freight futures. So the market to sell is, 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 is broken out into six transportation hubs, uh, which make up seven individual uh, freight futures lanes. So on the West Coast, we have Seattle to Los Angeles, Los Angeles back to Seattle as two individual lanes. We take the average of those two lanes and we've created a Western average. In the South, we've got LA to Dallas, Dallas back to LA, average those two lanes. We've got a Southern average. And then we have a triangle in the East. Chicago to Atlanta, Atlanta to Philly, Philly back to Chicago, average those three individual lanes, and we've got an Eastern average. And from those three individual lanes, uh, those averages, we've created a national average. So that's 11 futures markets, which have been listed on the nodal exchange uh, that are available now for trading to manage risk. And the reason why we selected these lanes 
is, is, is pretty simple. Number one, uh, the volume of freight that moves on those seven lanes, it's about 25% uh, of all freight nationally is moving on those seven individual lanes. And from that, you've got a correlation of about 85% of, 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 of freight on those lanes correlate nationally and regionally to the, uh, the movement of freight. So very liquid, lots of, lots of carriers, lots of shippers, lots of brokers involved on the lanes and highly correlated to what's going on nationally and regionally. So that's the rationale behind that. The contracts themselves, um, they're monthly contracts, meaning that if the settlement takes place at the end of the month. Uh, so the last trading uh, day of an individual futures contract is the, uh, uh, the last trading day of the month. The contracts themselves, they're cash settled. What that means is they're settled off an index price produced by DAT. Um, there is no physical tr truck involved, so a truck will never ever show up if you buy or sell a futures contract. These are financial contracts used to offset your risk on your operations. The contracts themselves, they settle daily. That means uh, what happens is a price is produced by the nodal exchange, and there could be a, a payment uh, uh, into your account if the price of a futures contract moves in your favor, or you may have to uh, put in additional money into your futures trading account if the price moves against you. That's called margin. Um, positions are open, meaning they, they are held through to the end of the month unless you trade out of it. Um, and they are marked to market based on a settlement price produced by the nodal exchange. The type of contract, they're based on dry van. Um, and it is the, the rate that you see quoted is a line haul rate, meaning there's no accessorial fees associated with it. There's no fuel charges associated with it. It is what it actually costs to move freight on those individual lanes. The standardized uh, size of each futures contract is 1,000 miles. Um, it's really to correlate along with what would be considered a long haul futures uh, market. They're quoted in dollars and cents per miles and the, uh, the contract series or how far out into the future a, a contract of a, a market can be traded goes forward 16 months. So today I can trade a futures contract and manage my exposure potentially out to December of 2020 um, if I wanted to do so. Wow. And then just to emphasize the point, a truck is never gonna show up. If you buy or sell a futures contract, there is no truck. This is a financial instrument used to help you manage volatility in your day-to-day -day, uh, business operation. So that's trucking freight futures. <laughs> that is, wow. That's a good presentation, by the way, Tom. I mean, you, obviously you know this, you mean you have it nailed. And, and I say that because I've seen you, when we met, you told me to check out a couple, like there was a St. Louis, there's some good videos on YouTube, right? You guys have the Freight yeah, Futures Roadshow. Yeah, show. so if you, if, you, yeah, if you go to our website, uh, freightways.com, we have a Freight Futures section. Um, you can learn all about the contracts. You can actually, you know, see how you go about becoming a member of the nodal exchange. But you have to do two things in order to trade a futures contract. Okay. A, you have to join the nodal exchange. And B, you have to establish, if you already don't have an account with one of 12 banks that are approved by nodal, uh, to, to handle customer money, to trade futures, you have to open up a, a clearing account with one of those 12 banks. Uh, you do those two, thi two things and you can trade a trucking freight futures. And so our website has all the information necessary to, uh, to learn how to trade and open up an account. Let's take a look at that. Let's do this. I'm going to, um, I'm gonna overtake your screen share I'm going to screen share. Let's go. So where, let's say we've got uh, somebody ready to do that. Where do you go? To the FreightWaves site? Yeah, go to FreightWaves.com. Okay. Mm, Freight Futures? And you, and you will see Freight Futures. That is correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Apply to trade, right? Okay, if you go to apply to trade, that will take you through uh, 
the steps necessary. So if you scroll down a little bit, you will see basically an infogram that shows you the steps. And there are basically four steps that you need to do in order to, to uh, become a member of Nodal and be able to trade a futures contract. Um, and in the box below the four steps are the 12 banks that are approved by the Nodal Exchange to handle, you know, to handle customer money uh, on behalf of the exchange to trade futures. Right, and I mean, you've got, do you have the globe covered there between those banks? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're the biggest of the big in terms of the investment banks. Yeah. Um, there are also a number of future specific uh, companies that are listed there. For instance, Wells Fargo, Macquarie Bank, ADM, and EDNF Man are 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 future specific uh, uh, companies focused on on for truck and freight futures. We've also got the link in the live chat. Thanks so much for that. So, wow, that is, it is amazing. So let let's go back. Um, uh, let's let's take a step back and. The purpose, how did, how did it come to be that somebody said, this is going to be a great idea. This is what we need to do. I mean, you laid out the foundation, but how, tell me more about how this came about. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I mean, the history goes, I, I, I've been with Freight Waves now for almost two years. Actually, it'll be two years next week um, awesome. when I joined Freight Waves and I joined specifically for the Trucking Freight Futures Initiative. But, um, you know, the idea came from Craig Fuller. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, um, you know, he looked at, you know, I, he looked at his, he had his experience. By the way, and I played the video where he was talking, right? And he's talking. Yep. So we did, we just played that. But yeah, keep going. I just want to let you know we did play that. So, yeah. So, so you know, so he had it in his mind, you know, um, you know, from his experience in trucking, from his experience in day trading stocks, um, right. you know, that, you That's know, awesome, right? That's so key, that, isn't that's it? A, isn't that amazing? That, that, that's key, you know, so he used his experience, you know, good and bad trade. Um, and then he looked around at the other commodity markets um, and he looked at probably the closest proxy, which is waterborne freight, which has a very huge derivative market attached to it. And, you know, really ask the question, you know, I've got, we've got a trucking market here that's $730 billion. It's highly volatile. There's lots of players exposed to this volatility, yet there's no way for a company to manage that exposure to spot freight rates. And so that was the question that was asked. And, you know, the two to three to four year, you know, journey has been to solve that, you know, that, that problem. And that's what was was solved when we introduced freight futures back on March 29th. So okay, so w there was the uh, right, and that's the thing too. March 29th, that was the first trade this year. That was that was the the, the launch date and the first trade. So that's crazy. So futures, you know, have been a reality for just a little bit over six months. I mean, the progress is great. Um, we have a huge pipeline of shippers, carriers, and brokers looking to join the nodal exchange. Um, we have a number of trades which have been executed. We have open interest, which is positions that have been put on to manage exposure to volatility and freight rates. Um, and so these contracts are real, they're working, and they're solving a real world business problem. Right, because at that level, let's, I mean, let's say you've got a thousand trucks, right? Or rather you're a shipper relying on a thousand trucks. And you, you know, you don't want to be so beholden to spot market volatility. Am I, am I in the, am I close? Yeah. I mean, yeah. So it, that's exactly it. I mean, it, it doesn't matter the size of the company. It matters the exposure to volatility and freight rates. So you can be a small, you know, company. You can be the largest, the large publicly, uh, you know, traded companies with exposure. The exposure is the same regardless of the number of trucks. Fair. Um, That's a good and point. So, it, so it, it gives you the opportunity to eliminate, um, you know, a, a real business risk. Um, and, you know, what, what's nice about this is, and I'll go back to the point I made earlier, um, if you look at, like, just the markets in general and things that are moved on surface transportation, you know, they're commodity-oriented, whether it be agricultural products, 
um, whether it be, you know, it, it could be oil related products. These, these markets or those, in um, those, those commodities have mechanisms today where you can take away volatility in the underlying price of those individual commodities. Yet, you know, you have transportation, which is required to move those things across the country or around the world, um, where there's been no real way of mitigating, you know, volatility in those rates. And that's what trucking freight futures, you know, do for, for the markets today. So I want to say this too, I, you know, for the, there's a person out there right now listening to us talk and they're thinking, guys, I, I don't know. I, I, I drive a truck. This is what I do. I do some things. And, and I'm serious here because I've been that guy before. I've been that guy in class and I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about, you know, yep. but it's not, it's not beyond the understanding of the average person. I'll tell you what, let me tell you something. When I, when I watch the stock ticker going across, I'm that guy. I'm like, I, I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I don't own any stocks. I'm not trading any stocks, but I sure would love to be in some of that money. I know that that, you yep. know, right. And so the thing is that if you are a driver, and this seems out of your grasp, you are part of what we're discussing right now. And, and these concepts are not out of your grasp. It's, it's, it's right no, there. Not at all. And, and it, yeah. yeah. And that's why we're talking about it. That's why you're on the show talking about it. Cause I want everybody to know that this is, it is possible to, to, to understand what's at play here. And as you develop your business, maybe there's room for these concepts to apply to you, your business, and the, and the growth of wealth, right? Isn't that, that's why people listen to Dave Ramsey. They want to know how to grow their wealth. It's what we all want. How yep. do I make more money? Yeah. That's why people are watching I mean, my show. This, this is a way, you know, this is a way, you know, not only to, you know, hopefully help you make more money, but it certainly eliminates one of the variables um, out of your business where you can look at, you know, forecast for revenue, uh, forecast for margin and, and protect it using a, a futures contract. Right. Right. And that's, and that's where in the realm of wealth management, just like uh, it's, it's been taught to me that if you, if you really want to save money or if you really want to make money in the arena of taxes, it's all about, saving and tax avoidance rather than because you don't actually you can't get ahead in that game but what you can do is minimize the amount you pay which is kind of the insurance game right in insurance uh, i know I'm, I'm getting i'm kind of getting in the weeds here but in these in these conceptions of, of of how to manage wealth sometimes it's not about making more but losing less and you're talking about <laughs> risk yeah. mitigation it's risk mitigation, uh, risk management. Right. And, uh, you know, a, a futures contract is not insurance. Um, right. <laughs> Thank you. Good. It, That's good. But it is a way for you to, you know, make a reasonable attempt to, you know, to, to, to manage an exposure. I like that to make a reasonable attempt to manage exposure. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is it's, it's no easy feat right what what you do you have to you're specific you're to the point you've got definitions there's a lot of education there is a working market but you do education isn't that that's what you do yeah i mean that's if, i mean freightway's role in you know in in the in, in the futures market truck and freight futures market is exactly that you know we are the educational and the marketing arm um you know we are in a tri party arrangement with that solutions with the nodal exchange um, to bring these futures contracts to market so that is the, the they do the price assessment um, and provide the underlying index value that is used for settlement on the futures contracts um, the nodal exchange is where the contracts are listed uh, meaning that that's where they're traded um, and they're also cleared and clearing in the futures world is very very important important because trading is anonymous. So if you wanted to uh, trade, buy or sell a futures contract, you would not know who you're buying or selling, you know, that futures contract to or from. It could be me. 
the exchange in a futures transaction becomes the seller to every buyer, the buyer to every seller. And they do that through a mechanism called clearing. And that's a very, very important uh, uh, concept within, within the futures world because the exchange takes away counterparty exposure, meaning that if you bought or sold a futures contract, financial guarantee and performance is made by the exchange. So there's no risk to buy buying or selling a futures contract. Right. Okay. And that's the thing too, is that part of this equation is that all of the trading happens on nodal. It's on a yes, right. on a regular exchange. That's correct. That's right. Okay. Wow, man. Okay, well listen, I, I I think that I think we've we've been prepared with the foundation of the education. Um, I think what we need to do now is right, we're gonna go on to Kyle and he's I think he's gonna show us some of that. Right? And then we're gonna go back into the media and the information side. Um I at this point, Tom, I guess what I should do is thank you. Thank you so yeah, well, much. Thank, thank you very much, Jay. Thanks for having me. And, uh, you know, I thank your audience for listening. Dude, so I, we, we thank you for your time. We thank you for the education. And also, hey, here, I always like to ask this. If someone wants to ask more, what's a good, is there, is there somewhere people can go to, I mean, I showed that page, but is there, I don't know, is there a hotline or an email or I don't know? Anything like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, the, the best place to go is, is our website because, in, you know, if you, if you click on how to trade um, and you want more information, you know, you just click on that button and an email will be generated and it comes to me at the end of the day. Awesome. So you know, if you go there, you're going to get me. So there you go. You guys heard it. If you're if you're right, if you're listening. So you, when you go to that, you go to that link on the FreightWaves.com page and say, hey, Tom. I saw you and Jay, and this is what I got to know. Exactly. <laughs> that's how it works. That's, that's how everything works. You know, you, exactly. you first you name drop, then you go with the question, and then then, you, then you, everything rains, and you get your money. <laughs> Man, Tom, you know what? I really appreciate it. It's fun. I, I we haven't we haven't seen each other in a while, so this is really fun for me to have you on my show. Great. Well, I appreciate it, um, dude. It's been great. Thank you so much for your time, your information, and uh, please keep in touch. Keep us informed. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Tom. See you at Freightways Live. Uh, I hope, we, hope to see you at Freightways Live. I so. hope to be there, man. That'd be great. Thanks. Perfect. Thanks, Tom. Right, you take bye. care, man. Yep, bye. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bye. All right. So we let's see. Okay. So we got Tom is Tom's got the rest of the night off. And so what we're going to do is, guys, I want here's what I want you to do. I want you to stick around, and uh, let's do, what do we got here? We got Tom. Oh, yeah, there he is. He's still on the screen there. Okay, so, dude, all right, check this out. You seriously want to watch this? Because what we just talked about, this is going to blow your mind. Okay, that was pretty cool. Um, to talk about the coolness that we just saw, I want to welcome, hey guys, we've got Kyle from Freight Waves. This is the Freight Waves show, so Kyle, welcome to the show. Can you see me and hear me okay? 
Yeah, thanks so much for having me, man. I gotta say, this is an awesome show. It is, uh, it's so cool to see another broadcaster in the freight space, and uh, you're doing a great job, man. It's awesome. Wow, thanks, man. And you know, I and I, I gotta tell you, I've seen some of your videos, and I mean, I really, I, 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 I feel a kinship because, like, okay, I saw. There was a 30-minute night shift video that I watched, and I think it was from a couple months ago. Yeah. I saw something recently where you, there was four of you. The the yep. the 30-minute was you and uh, I forgot. Is it Reed? I think oh yeah, it was Reed. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, let me let me tell you how this whole thing happened. Yeah. Go. And please. so, Tom Tom is such an influential person in the whole organization, not only for yourself but for me as well. So uh, I recently got married. And back around February, previously I was a truck driver. Thank you. Yeah, I was a truck driver way back in the day. And while I was driving, I was learning about options trading on Robinhood, the little app on your phone. And it kind of got me, you know, real excited about markets and whatnot. So I started learning more and more. And I was I was running a content agency before I was at Freight Waves. And I said, I need some trucking clients. I'm going to look on LinkedIn and see what's going on. So... I saw an ad for trucking freight futures and I knew what futures markets were and kind of had an idea, but I said, man, whoever these people are, I have to be a part of this. So I got super lucky and there was a road show. One of the ones you were talking about that one in Atlanta, I was about an hour outside of Atlanta. I drove over and Tom was actually the first guy that I met. And I'm, I'm going in there thinking there's no way these guys are going to let me pass the front door. You know, I, I, I'm not a futurist trader. I'm no big shipper. Um, so, you know, I walked in, I watched their presentation at the end of it. I was like, what can I do to not only work with you guys, but work with this software as well? Cause I saw a glimpse of sonar and three weeks later I was living in Chattanooga, Tennessee, working at freight waves. And that's how it goes there. It is it is blazing speed, and you know you gotta love it for what it is. Um, but shout out to Tom, man. I wouldn't be sitting here right now if it wasn't for him, and and George Abernathy as well. So, yeah. like Emily was saying earlier, um, when you're dealing with a crew of people that are just so uh, intelligent, not only emotionally intelligent but intellectually intelligent as well, it really drives this, you know. Uh, extreme growth. I mean, when I started, we were on the other side of Chattanooga at about, you know, maybe 35, 40 people. Today, people show up to work and I'm having to say, hey, nice to meet you because I'm seeing two or three new people start a day because we are just growing so fast. And so it is funny as well. You mentioned previously, I was a driver and there's something very serendipitous about the Fuller family because I was a driver for US Express. Mm -hmm. So I, I worked for Craig's dad wow. in you know a grand sense. I drove team trucks for about two years. And uh, I got out of trucking in about 2015, once my, I kind of started doing some online business stuff. And, and here I am today, um, you know, basically working directly. I get to see Craig and the, I actually see Max quite a bit too, he stops by. So being a part of this industry in this realm it just goes to show the age we're living in and the reason I'm here tonight, I'll be able to show you guys kind of the benchmark of the entire organization, the Sonar platform. As you've been saying, it is a platform that if you, if you glance at it, you could say, whoa, man, that is just a little over my head. The issue is, is that it, it's kind of like I tell people when I first saw it, it's the concept of I didn't know exactly what I was looking at, but I knew that I needed to know more about it. As in, this has to have something of value in it. And so we can talk a little bit about it. I've got some pages ready. I've got some stuff great, great. that's uh, pretty much directly related to the auto industry. But great. regardless if you're running an auto trailer, if you're running a refrigerated trailer or a van trailer, or you just want to know exactly what's happening in regards to traffic, weather, market movements, there's no better platform. Um, and so I'll go ahead and jump right into it. Great. And yeah, uh, I'm going to sure. share my screen. I love it. So I'm going to share this. And I'm actually going to go over here. And let me try, let me do this right here. And I will share it. And then let me jump over there. Can you see the sonar screen? There should be a map up. Yeah, I sure can. Okay. Yep. Perfect. So I want to start, and I just want to talk about a very simplistic concept. We talked about outbound rejects. We're going to get there in a second. Yeah. But first off, I just want to talk about two concepts that regardless of what you're hauling, you know about. And that's the concept of supply and demand. 
how valuable is my capacity available on my truck today versus how valuable is that freight inside of a market? So in this map right here, we're looking at three different colors, good old red, white, and blue. And when you see the blue zones, what you're going to be seeing there is a greater amount of outbound freight. That's going to signify that carriers and truck drivers and owner operators inside of that market have the most potential to find the best option available. Now, when you see a white market, that's essentially saying that it's near balance, that everything for every one that comes in, there's one that comes out. When you see a dark red market, in fact, right down near there, I'll hover over it so you guys can see in Phoenix, it's called the head haul index. And the reason being is that head haul, back haul, it's going to give you a perception of where should I head to? Where should I possibly stay away from? When you see a red zone, such as Phoenix, such as Atlanta, that lighter shade of red, that's indicating that for every load that comes in, there's just not a lot of options heading and, out. And this is at this moment, right? Because this, this is, is correct. So this yeah. is as of yesterday. Okay. All the data inside of Sonar. In fact, you're talking about me never sleeping. I do catch a nap every now and then. <laughs> but when I wake up in the morning to get ready for freight waves now, I sit down with my cup of coffee about 630 in the morning. And I dive into this and I analyze the market. So I'm able to highlight for carriers across the country. Where is a good place to look at today? If you happen to get lucky and you're in the right market that I'm able to highlight, then you'll understand where you're at. It's updated between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. every morning. So a fantastic team of data scientists, some of the smartest, most diverse thinkers. I mean, you're talking people that were not really in freight. We have a few people that were in freight. But, you know, at the, at the end of the day, if, if you know complex uh, algorithms and mathematics, you can apply that statistical ability, um, you know, whether it's casino games or figuring out airline rights or uh, understanding inbound, outbound freight. Those people are so amazing at what they do. And just having a conversation with them, I walk away being smarter for it. And uh, what's interesting, too, I, I like to, I, when when it seems like it's getting a little too hard to understand, I like to throw in a little insert. Everything is a mathematical formula. Essentially, yeah, absolutely. I mean, am I going to go see a movie? At what time? How much are the tickets? What's the popcorn going to cost right. me? There you're doing a math formula. So every, It's all an it's algorithm. A, the, exactly. An algorithm is I love, love a good definition an algorithm is merely a math formula containing parameters that 100% represent variables right and things yeah. can change and then the math formula anyways I, I love that it's such an important part of this and that's why it changes constantly and well and 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 that's what's so amazing about this is so people often ask you know where are you getting this data because that's a <laughs> I mean, and that's a fair question, especially for our customers that are inside of the platform that are using this data to make huge, I'm talking huge business decisions. We have some of the biggest 3PLs, some of the top, I mean, if you look at our customer list compared to the top 25 you and know, brokerages 3PL, and carriers. Say it. What's a 3PL? I'm, I've said it before. What, I didn't know. What's a 3PL? Tell us. So in my words, a 3PL is essentially the, the entity that's going to take care of the interaction between the movement of that freight from one dock to another, whether that's paperwork, uh, tracking and tracing, you know, and Hey man, I was a trucker. I've, I've had those 3 AM calls. What are you doing? Where's my freight? Everybody's dealt with good brokers and, and, and bad three PLs. You know, it, it comes down to sometimes you get the nice cashier and sometimes you get the rude one. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody's trying totally. to do, you know, everyone's trying to do something in this world and, and have have their carve out in the business. Once you meet a good 3PL that you can yes. work with, that's when it really counts. And so the 3PLs that are using this software, uh, they're able to actionably use this data because what we're what we've been able to do is it's pretty fantastic is through strategic partnerships. We're able to tap in to over 200 different TMS software platforms. So you know, those, those loads that uh, are those platforms that are basically accept and reject the tendered loads, uh, we can see inside of these different platforms and we can see, and it's completely anonymous. Everything that comes in, if a, if a rejection of a load comes in, it's not rejected because a truck wasn't there or because the rate was too low. It's just a rejection. 
And so we'll move over to that in a second, and I'll cool. kind of explain how that works. Man, um, doing great. I appreciate it. Yeah, this absolutely. Is awesome. This is awesome. Yeah, and 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 like I said, man, I've I've seen this when I started at uh, about back in May, mid May. Sonar was a three point six, three point seven. As Emily was talking about Freightways Live Chicago, I've even told them, man, I said I don't want to see five point oh. I I could possibly log in and look <laughs> at the QA, but I want to see it live. I want to see the amazing stuff. I've seen some snippets. I've heard some rumors. Uh, the stuff that's coming, it's going to pump it up again wow. next level as, as we do, man. You know, I'll give it, I'll give a shout out to Craig Fuller. There's no half measures at Freight Waves. Yeah, it is I 100%. Agree. So this, yeah. this head haul index, basically what it's telling you, you can see it on a daily change, a weekly change. What you're going to be able to see is the movement from, hey, where can I place my capacity? Now take, for example, up here right now, if you had a van trailer or a refrigerated trailer in Detroit, there's not a lot of outbound optionality, but right down the road, right here in Toledo, there is more outbound freight versus inbound freight. So it gives you that ability to say, now the rate itself, you're not talking about, you're not getting $6 a mile out of Toledo, but it will prevent you from sitting in that truck stop. It will prevent you from sitting and waiting. So, and so I want to throw in spot market. Is another yeah. term, right? Yeah, spot, absolutely. Spot market. I gotta tell you, until I was watching uh, a lot of the content you guys are putting out, I didn't. I wasn't exactly sure what a spot market was. I think I know what it is now, but I want to hear you tell us what's a spot market. Yeah, sure. So to tell you that, there's two types of, of really. There's there's two types of things rolling in the van, refrigerated, you know, kind of regular old contract versus spot. So contracted freight, you've got those. You know, say you got a thousand trucks, you go out, you contract to a lane for a buck fifty a mile, and those tenders come in. Okay, all the contracted freight comes in, everything rolls, everybody's happy because there's no better option. Now, what happens is if I'm in a zone and that dollar fifty a mile starts to not be as exciting as the call it call it a load board, call it the open market, right? right? The right. bids. If I see a load on a load board, it's going to pay me a dollar eighty a mile. And, and I'm contracted, but I'm not really contracted. All I've got to do is basically say, I'm going to reject that load because I, I found myself a better option. I, that dollar eighty a mile, everybody at the end of the day is always good. There's two reasons, really two big reasons loads get rejected. There's not a truck available in a deadhead range, in a reasonable deadhead range. And there's just a, a load that's paying more money. I mean, at the end of the day, anybody out there, especially your listeners, if they're rolling, if their wheels are rolling, they want to make the most amount of revenue right. per mile they can. So, and, and it's a perfect segue. I've got a few other things to show you, but I want to roll over here. And before I break yes. into outbound tender, I love it. Yes, exactly. So, before I break into the concept of the outbound tender rejections, I want to talk a little bit about the outbound tender volume okay. and understand that volume is a it's a it's a wonderful leader in terms of. Uh, kind of what's happening across the general freight market. So whether it's van, refrigerated, uh, final mile, expedited, auto hauling, when the freight turns down, the kind of mar the market's going to soften up. And so what we can see right now is actually it, this index is a 10,000 base index. And, and what the data scientists did was on March 1st, 2018, they set the base point at 10,000 for all these markets you were talking about Emily earlier that there's 135 key market areas and those are based on three digit zip codes and so this goes back to if you guys are familiar with the DAT heat maps it's the same economic zones they're based on essentially economic um, economic activity inside of these three digit zip codes and so what we do is we measure the outbound tender volume for the entirety of the USA. And so that tender, that's the, that's the word that's important because tenders are not on the spot market. Tenders are sent out from contracted freight. So this is contracted freight. There's big red trucks, white trucks, blue trucks, white oh, trucks right. you see running across. That's all contracted freight. You know, these are the sales guys go out to the shippers and they shake hands and say, we're going to run this for you. So as we see the volume, the tendered volume heading down, these are tenders that are coming from shippers to either the three PLs or the carriers directly. And so when you see this happen, so what we're looking at on the map here, you got the blue mountain that's this year. So that's 2019. And you can see that it's now under 10,000. 
So it's under that starting point from where we were back in March. But if we look at, as I highlight and hover over it, that's 2018. Oh. The same thing happened in October. And so a lot of folks say, oh my gosh, you know, the, the economy's blowing up, the world's going crazy. From the market experts that I've spoken to and the folks at FreightWaves that I said, what is going on with this? Help me understand this better so I can explain this to our viewers and listeners. The deal is it's October. October is the uh, end of third quarter, start of fourth. It is the shippers essentially kind of taking a little breather before the holiday season starts to pick up. Right now in Chattanooga, Tennessee, it's fall break. It's pretty quiet around the office because people are getting in that little bit of uh, rest and relaxation before the big push essentially all the way into Christmas comes. So if we scroll back, I'm going to drag this back here to yeah, wow. last year. And so we can see this is this is 2018 last year. And uh, let me just move this out of the way right quick. So this crosshairs, we can basically say, hey, there's 10-8 last year. So see what happens right around. Actually, we'll see tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see tomorrow if, if the pattern continues. It starts picking back and starts trailing up again slowly. So granted, you know, we always want that volume because that implies optionality. But there's this ecosystem that happens inside of the freight markets that as the volume turns down, things that happen in regards to uh, capacity in the market, it, 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 it's directly correlated. So I want to show you now how the outbound tender rejects compare to the, By the, way, um, the, the, the ability of this tool, the way you can drill down. I mean, this is insane. It, it's, it's th these guys. I mean, I'll tell you Crazy. what, my life was, my life was forever changed by freight waves. I mean, I moved from a farmhouse in the middle of Georgia up to uh, wonderful Chattanooga, Tennessee. And now I get to e explain and talk about, and as Emily said, I started out in sales, loved, loved sales, but I wanted to be able to scale this information out into the general world. And, you know, you can do one thing great or you can do two things good. And so it was basically like, hey, let me be on the TV and let me focus on how I can get this out to the people. In fact, for everybody watching there, as I said, I was in sales. So if you are watching right now, we want to get you hooked up. Make sure if you're watching the show, put in for a demo. Say that you saw this from the auto transport intel group and we'll make sure you get a free trial for sonar we're going to sign you up you're going to be involved with the customer success team we're going to we're going to teach you this stuff and that's the whole thing is i tell people on night shift all the time especially man when i was a kid you know think about when you're a kid you pick up a video game and you're like okay this button does this this button does that for the first couple of hours you're like trying to figure out three days later you're just going hard on it right Sonar is the same kind of thing. It is. It yeah, really is, Yeah, that's me man. and Fortnite. Yeah, I was exactly. playing earlier. Yeah. So it, it's, it, it comes down to when you start to learn something new, it's going to be like, oh, my gosh, what is this? But we have it a, is. It's amazing. Intense. It is intense. We have an amazing team, and there is a, just an encyclopedia 10 times over worth of resources that are going to be able to teach you this stuff. So let's look here. So let's explain outbound tender rejects, right? We explain outbound tender volume. Yeah. Outbound tender rejects. This concept comes from those contracted freight tenders. Now, when I have a better option or I just don't want to pick that freight up because I have to go somewhere else or I don't have a truck, I'm going to reject that freight. And you can see this in a real-time actionable insight. If we look back at November of last year, leading up into Thanksgiving, this, this green line right here, the outbound rejections begin to rise up. And then after everyone comes back from Thanksgiving, they say, okay, I'm not rejecting anymore. Give me that freight. And then as we go into Christmas, same story. I'm rejecting it because I'm going home. I'm not going to run that load. But look at this right here, about uh, 1226, one day after the market picks up. Now, something really interesting happened wow. this year. So as of about after Christmas Day, I don't know if, if there is just an influx of capacity for some reason, but where we're seeing this at now is at 5.25%. So let me put this in, a, in an opposite perspective to help explain it. Think of it this way, 94.75% of all the electronically tendered freight that goes out is being readily accepted right. because there's no better options. 
And that's because the tenders that go out, the contracted tenders, they're going to go out in the routing guide in the lowest price first. And so there, and, and carriers out there know this. I'm sure auto is a little different. It's, yes. it's, it's a lot different. But, I've never hauled, I never hauled cars, but I know those guys, they make some money, they work hard and you got to be on your game. But with, that's right. That, all of what you said is true. And the load yeah. boards, the spot yeah. market, the volatility, what's happened is a lot of load board rates are low. I showed some earlier. They're low, Those man. There's a lot of capacity. Low, exactly. So you've got these downturns and people yeah. are waiting for this green line to go back up. Oh, please, God, can we right. get that line to go back up? And it just never goes back up. Well, and if, if you guys are, you know, if you love this kind of stuff, uh, you know, and who can't, if you're involved in the industry, you, you want to see which way it's going. Um, every Friday, our market Intel team, uh, brilliant guys, they release the pricing power index. And so this pricing power index is a zero to 100 gauge. And it's telling you, you know, who's got the control. And as, as of last Friday, it was around 35, which is leaning very uh, highly towards the shipper side. So the shippers have control. That's the way it goes. And, and yes. Regardless yes. of what they're shipping, whether that's a car, whether that's a, um, you know, I don't even know. Tim Dooner was talking about his his pizza. I don't know if the rates for getting a pizza delivery were, were uh, you know, looking pretty soft. <laughs> but uh, as we as it stands now, you know, I think going through the end of the year, you can see a really interesting pattern right here from pretty much 923 to where we're at now. The rejections have pretty much flattened out. Now, I started at Freight Waves back in, uh, in around here in March, and it was almost, I felt like I was a bad luck charm because as soon as I started, they went from about 6% all the way to a low of around 4%. So it started to come back up right around here because of the national average. Okay. You can see them climbing up into July 4th because people are rejecting freight to go home. They don't want to take stuff that's not leading them home. And then this little blip right here, because of the national average, was taking into account the outbound rejections due to the GM strike. So when oh, the GM my. strike hit, there was no capacity coming in. So there's no capacity to take that freight out. And so we also have inbound tender rejections, which you know we could literally sit here and talk about sonar at this pace until the sun comes up tomorrow and i still wouldn't be able to get all the information in so if you do want to learn more you know follow us every day talk to the folks in the sales department in the customer success department but before before we run out of time i want to talk a little bit about so I, I i dug up some specific automotive details for you nice. guys thank you that's awesome yeah so so if you work in specific markets, I picked Chattanooga, Tennessee, there's automotive production by each individual. And I'll just pull it up right here. It's really simple to navigate. Uh, you just type in auto. And now I'm going to get the automotive production for Chicago, or I can see automotive production for BMW. I can see Hyundai. So if you, if you haul near a Hyundai, if you live in Alabama, or, or if you live wow. um, – in uh basically out west where yeah, they're no, bringing and, in and teslas right and we know that right anybody who's who's paying attention in oem which is yeah. new car hauling right knows many of the locations you said re re apply to plants of specific yeah. oems and then beyond yeah. that yeah that's and then right and that's where you get into multimodal you get into the rail you get up the vessel shipping coming into the port you guys cover all that stuff absolutely too, and it's only getting it's bigger amazing. i tell you what by by 5.0 henry byers our, our international maritime market expert is probably one of the smartest people i've ever met in my life and this dude has been working you say i don't sleep i don't think this huh. dude slept in in the last six months because between him and the data science team the amount of work they put in to make 5.0 like i mean and, and craig said it the other day we're we're starting to build the concept of uh, you know a data platform that will live for for centuries man you know you think <laughs> oh, of man, from, that's awesome right yeah this is from, from the time data. from from the first ship that oh, left man. a a dock back you know when when they put wood in the water to where we're at today Everything was leading up into to sonar. So take a look at what's going on this green line here. This is, and this is one of those you're talking about, those long acronyms. So this is weight.autoretail. And so 
this is amazing. You can see a big jump up basically at the end, all the way leading into pretty much two days ago. So what we've been able to do, and this is like, Whoa. this is what will blow your mind, this is, so is fleet, that dude. they have been able to geofence. Whoa. So if you're not familiar with the geofence, basically picture on a, on a Google Maps, you got a box around an area. Right. And as tra traffic rolls in and out of that box, we're able to measure the time that trucks sit. And so this auto retail, these are car dealerships. We are measuring the average time that trucks, based on ELD location data, uh -oh. are sitting ELD. In exactly. exactly. No, and that's isn't that interesting? How when is the the picture? It's murky, and then it begins yeah. to clear out. And you're like, oh, I see the purpose of the data. Right. Well, and right. it's like, it, it, and that's the other thing too. How are you getting this stuff? Well, at the end of the day, concept is there's millions of ELDs out there and, and growing. And, and through our strategic partnerships based upon the tribal knowledge and relationships within the industry, we've been able to source this data and bring it to you completely anonymous. So when it's talking about auto retailers, we're talking about auto retailers across the country. Now, when we look at wait times by individual market, I'm not sure on the exact number of auto retailers, but if it's comparable to the 230,000 warehouses that we've geofenced through a team, <laughs> then awesome, we're talking... We're talking about any car dealership that is available because of the machine learning and the artificial intelligence combined with data scraping. These guys can, you know, a task that would, you know, possibly take a year can take six hours. And so seeing that the wait time right now is at 102 minutes, where previously it was at around 67 minutes, it could mean a lot of things. It could mean that uh, you know there might be more cars on trailers having to come off it could also mean that the general sentiment of the auto retailers the dealerships are just not interested in keeping trucks happy that's the thing you have to remember when you have wait times you have a soft market the shippers or receivers don't have to keep those carriers happy because they're going to come back anyways when it's a when it's a hot market you know a carrier says i'm not going to xyz chevy i'm not going to you know abc ford because they don't unload me in the right amount of time they make me sit there when it's a soft market you got to sit and wait so um one more thing before we go just wow. just the I idea ability so i want to dive into the concept crushing of, it man you're crushing it i live in this stuff man i i feel so fortunate to be able to to, to do so um like i said i was a truck awesome. driver um i i I absolutely love data. I love data visualization. Yeah. Let me show you guys what's going on here. So it's it's super easy to use. And and like I said, everybody, you want a free trial? Sign, just go to son freeways.com forward slash sonar. We're going to get you a trial. We're going to get you hooked up with our sales team, growing at an exponential pace. And, you know, I've had a hand in training quite a few of these guys. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this away here. And what I want to do is show you this amazing tool and this is great for anybody it doesn't matter what kind of freight you're hauling i'm in chattanooga tennessee it's a little dark out right now for sure so we're loading up uh i don't have that so in chattanooga i don't know if you're familiar with it we have the gig internet so if you're plugged in to ethernet it's a full gig so at work <laughs> it's 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 pretty fast on wi-fi oh, here no. check this no, out you go to the cameras oh this is crazy yeah so this is so we've got twenty thousand oh road cameras all across the country um, and so if you if you get in a jam, so it's dark out here, obviously, again, another, close to... another strategic partnership, right? Well, actually, these are publicly available DOT cameras. And so, what? for example, yeah, so this is how detailed the data science team is, is that they've been able to go through and, and you think it's like it's no one that's sitting there laboring. This is like somebody who's like, yeah, I wrote this in an afternoon of code to be able to these guys are so smart it blows my mind man so so what i'll do is i'll redo the camera search let's see if we can get a site out out west well there you go so it's getting dark out on highway 101 out in california too but uh right. there you can see it right there so tuesday october 8th um about just a couple minutes old they're all less than 10 now. wow yeah so and then this is our critical events tab uh, and so this one right here is going to highlight uh, oh these circles all... i've seen this too what's this stuff so this is our critical events weather platform right, and so this, this weather. weather platform there's probably no greater weather platform available 
regardless if you're in freight or not, we had people during the hurricane actually come into Sonar to sign up just to be inside this weather platform that were firefighters or, uh, you know, just residents trying to see what's going on. So I can see, hey, look, there's an earthquake that just happened in British Virgin Islands. And then if I zoom over here, I'm going to be able to see tropical storm Hagibis. And not only that, I'm going to be able to see it's going to possibly impact or it will impact. Tropical storm Hagibis. Check this out, man. Now there's been an earthquake and a tropical storm. Japan is not having a good day. But if you zoom down in here, it'll tell you, it'll assign a risk score to specific locations. So, for example, when hurricanes are happening in the U.S., if you know, um, okay, New Orleans or Jacksonville or any of these places are going to be hit by a hurricane, what it gives you the ability to do is, number one, avoid that area, and number two, understand that after the fact, there's going to be a need for freight to come in and it's going to be priced at a premium. And so that is interesting too, isn't it? Wow. And then because it comes back to the industry. Well, it comes back to the industry and it comes back to the concept of what can I do with this data? And this is the, this is what we're going to talk about on Night Shift tomorrow night. So if you guys love this type of content and you want to learn more, 7 p.m., follow Freightways. We're going to give you a notification. I'm going to take your call. So if, you're, if you have any questions right now, tonight, tomorrow, Give me a call and we'll talk it through. We'll talk all about it. The The deal with Sonar is that if you're moving anything at all, you should have it in your arsenal. And you should definitely give it a try at least and understand that, sure, there's a learning curve. But remember the first time you put 10 years in line, there's a learning curve too. Is that 7 p.m. Eastern time or Central time? Yes, Eastern, correct. Thank you. Okay, yeah. so Freightways Night Shift Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern time. What's the call-in number? So I, I don't want to give the call a number okay. away just yet because it, right. it goes directly to my phone. <laughs> okay. so, so, so wow. So is there an email address or anything in the prior, or, or is there what's your web page? So it, it's it, it goes live. We go live from Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube as well. Oh wow! So if you if you follow us on okay. any of those um, different mediums, yeah. then you're going to get a notification when we actually hit that live button and, and push it out. And okay, the number will awesome. be up on the screen once we do it. So, man, I wow, appreciate awesome. speaking with you so much. Like I said, we could probably talk about this for the <laughs> next. I could sit here until yeah, the sun yeah. comes up, right? Yeah, but yeah, I gotta, me too. Uh, yeah, until man. the until the until the next typhoon comes around. That's that's you it, know Jay. I want to I want to say this is that because um, in fact here let's do this. Do me. Well, while we're talking this, while we're talking about this, you can unshare yeah. when you're ready. Yeah. Because I want to close up with this, and that is that uh, things are changing so fast. Yeah. Uh, and and I have a, I have a, I have a reason. Uh, I have an angle. I have an agenda at pointing this out. Um, that uh, there's th- things weren't happening this fast ten years ago in this industry. They, no they way. Were, they were not. In fact, if we were to go back in time, 2009, that, that sounded pretty space age, right? Absolutely. Right? Exactly. And 2009, I think if you go back, is kind of a digital extension of the 90s, 2000s. Things changed. There were still fax machines. Yep. But in the last, I mean, easily, I'll just say five years, so much has changed technologically. That five years ago, I didn't, Absolutely. I didn't even use an app five years ago. I don't think. I was, I was, man, I was, I pushed back against having a smartphone because right. I knew with my ADD, I would get so distracted by the thing for the longest time. And sometimes I think back to 2011, I started driving in 13. So it was right. I had a, I had a, a GPS, the trucker's Garmin, you know, uh-huh. but, but even still, I think back to 2010 and like, what did I do to, how did I get somewhere that I didn't know, you know, cause now it's just, just tell me where to go. In, in 2010, I was <laughs> using those flip out Thomas guide maps. For sure, man. Absolutely. <laughs> my first, my first start, actually how I got started in transport was in, in 2012. I started as a tour guide taking uh, international students from 18 years to 22 years old from LA to New York city and back. Wow on three week camping trips. Wow. And that was all without a smartphone. That was that was like 
pay phones and quarters right. and Beepers. paper log books. Yeah, man. So it's changed a lot, that's for sure. So now that we've kind of done a little historical data, let's reverse the mirror and let's yeah. look forward. When I hear people say things like driverless cars, it's impossible. I don't think anything's impossible now. No, man. I don't know and the right. I don't know the timing, and I don't know, man. But you got a guy in France who's walking around with a suit that's now driven by his brain. And if you think about, because I had to say, how does this happen? Like, how did someone figure out how to do that? And yet, going back to that concept of an algorithm, well, if you map out the brain waves of saying i want to move my leg and then apply that to <laughs> a machine moving awesome, it, it's it, it seems like such a foreign concept but people's lives are being changed and it really is imperative that the drivers that are out there i i think something like special i've always said if you're afraid of self-driving trucks you need to make yourself specialized anyone auto hauling you're already in that game Right. But in regards to if you're just a dry van hauler going from Phoenix to Tucson, I don't think you're going to lose your job tomorrow. Okay. But in five years, you might be looking for something else. And here's the thing. And this is what's important. I'm not trying to scare anybody, create right. mass pandemonium and talk about mass layoffs. I'm not trying to do that. What I'm trying to say is it's it's important to stay tuned stay alert yeah. stay informed and and be ready to stay adapt. valuable well, stay and, valuable right, man yeah just alone if you have sonar yeah i mean that's this is i'm not trying to do a sales pitch but i understand just watching freight waves now just seeing examples of sonar i realize the more data you have on this the better you prepare you will be for tomorrow this is all. I know there's a there's a there's a philosophical term of art here that if you're in a third world country and you're not connected to the internet, you just get further and further and further mm -hmm. behind. Which is why now we know there are programs to make sure that we're giving laptops out in third world countries. Like there's oh, man. no and need to get so absolutely. far behind, right? Well, and it's I think it's going to advance, and it has. Craig actually shared something on Facebook the other day. And it was, you know, because there's a lot of doom and gloom kids out there today, especially the younger gen. They can say, you know, the world's falling apart and this and that. It was a graph of all the bad things, hunger, pollution, et cetera. And from like 30 years ago, man, all of these graphs just went straight down. Like it might not seem that the technology is making things better. And there's there's sonar, there's plenty of sonar haters out there, man. And, <laughs> and that's okay. Haters. That's okay. okay. The thing is, is that it's it's easy to to hate something that you don't understand but one thing that we have the ability to overcome that is to understand that the number one goal and craig said it in his futures video that you played earlier is the concept that transparency inside of the industry is going to drive innovation across the board and it, at the end of the day there's a lot of goals inside of the building down there in chattanooga tennessee but i know that transparency and innovation are high on this list yeah, man. And, and you know, and, and Eric, thank you, Eric. Eric says, right, knowledge is power. That's what we're talking about. Knowledge yeah, is power. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 you know, there's something that there's something special about if you can take the knowledge. I like to think about, you know, if you had like a like a large jewel, right? And you and you look, you start to, it's like that kaleidoscope that we all look through when we were kids. If we can do that, if we continue to look through the kaleidoscope and try to find that information, yeah. And those ideas that will propel us to the next level. And that essentially, I mean, it's clearly that's what's happened to Freight Waves. Well, man, I appreciate you having me on the show so much. Fantastic content. And hey, give us a call on Night Shift anytime you want. I'd love to have you as a guest on Freight great. Waves now if you ever come down. Come on down. Come talk about data. Come have a beer down in Freight Alley. Oh Anybody who's listening, Amazing. definitely put in a uh, put in a request for a sonar demo. Because what we'll do is we'll get you with a sonar sales specialist, account executive, and what they will do is they'll have a one-on-one -on -one personalized thing like we just did, and they're gonna say, "What do you run? Where's your markets? Let's talk about this." They're gonna show you that data. I've I've helped train a lot of these guys to say. 
make sure that if you're doing, you know, regardless of what happens, spend that time with that person to educate them on what this platform can do. And hey, it might not be the right time right now for you to sign up. And that's okay too. We've had plenty of people that said, let me revisit this in eight weeks. Let me get my, let me get my things in order here. And then I'm going to come back to you because you do have to have the time to learn this. If you have a lot going on in your life right now, in terms of managing a business, then I would say, you know, make sure that you have the time to invest in learning it. And as I saw, there was a new video launched on your channel today, Sonar 101. So if you don't have time for the live demo, go for the video, right? And and I know that the the crew doing those changes up a lot, but I actually had uh, the fortune to work with the customer success team for a few weeks and some of the, just the, the coolest, you know, most uh, knowledgeable and patient people, really educators at heart, you know. And so they're awesome. Um, I can't say enough good things about everybody that walks in that building. So it's cool stuff, man. Awesome, man. Well, listen, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. You gave Jay. a lot of time. You gave a lot of information. I'm we, glad to do it, we man. We really appreciate it. So thanks so All much, right. man. You have a good night, okay? We'll see you next okay, time. Okay, man. Buddy. You take care. All right. So see wow, ya. wow, man. See ya. Okay, that man, that was that was amazing. Um, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do. I'll end this meeting here. Um, hey Jay, where'd you go? We can hear you. We can't see you. Um. Where am I? Oh, there I am. Okay, now I got to do this. I know this. When I exit, it's not a very smooth transition, but you know what? It's okay. It's it's a little rocky. It's a little It's like when you headed up the roller coaster and it's a little rickety. Although this would be the end of the roller coaster, so that analogy makes no sense. Um, by the way, I do want to say this. Listen, I really want to thank. Um, obviously, man, I want to thank you so much. Uh, number one, you guys for sticking with me and learning and being part of the community. But I really, really want to thank Freight Waves. Um, and thank you, Craig Fuller. Uh, I met you in May. I got a live interview with you. You have let me explore your organization, bring your folks on tonight. Thank you, Emily, for uh, presenting the first segment. She's the lead anchor. You'll see her on FreightWaves.com videos. Thank you, Tom Mallon. Uh, VP and uh, financial planning in the freight futures market and education space of freight waves. And thank you, Kyle Cunningham, uh, sonar salesperson, night shift host, uh, educationer extraordinaire. I'm not sure if that's a word or not, but I mean, listen, it's just amazing. I really, really appreciate it. I also, of course, I want to thank ACV Auctions. Go to acvauctions.com forward slash ATI. ACV Auctions is another great load board you've got to get signed up with. They really do care about you. You know, that's what one of the things that we like to feature on this show is companies and organizations that want to help you build your business and, and make money, right? And, and do get good information and be able to talk to people. That happens at ACV Auctions. Also, I want to make sure you know about Murphy Auto Dispatch Services. Same thing applies there. You can talk to Sue. She wants to help you. She will book for you if she's not full. I think she might be full right now, but you know what? Uh, slots open up, so give her a call. You can contact her. Go to Murphy Auto Dispatch Services. And listen, I mean, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. It means a lot. Um, This has been another great Tuesday night, episode 106. If you got the email, thanks for tuning in. I'm sorry that the Facebook page changed. Please adjust and adapt. Please check out the new LinkedIn page. Um, And, man, I'm going to be here next Tuesday night, too. Oh, speaking of ACV, right? ACV, next week. We're going to do another ACV show. We're going to talk to Joe and the gang, get caught up on what's happening with them. A lot is happening with them. And, you know, this is, I'm proud to say this is the car shipping business platform that you can count on every Tuesday night to be here, to have your mind blown about what's happening in the marketplace. If you want to contact the show, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Send me an email. Let me know how I can help. See who I can get you in contact with. Let's talk. 
And um, I really do mean that. Again, thanks so much for tuning in. And, of course, I know you guys are out on the road. A lot of guys are out on the road. Listen, if you're not on the road right now, you're probably getting on the road again soon. Or you're sending folks out on the road. Or, you know, you're interacting with carriers at some point. And, then, listen, if you're, if you're a driver or a resident and you're interacting with the truckers, don't, don't pull in front of them and slam on your brakes and brake check. Give them a break. Let them drive. Let them do their business. They are trying to help and be a part of the economy and the community, too. That's what we're all trying to do. We're just trying to have a, uh, have a better tomorrow. So, listen, guys, thank you so much. Be safe out there. Take care. And I'll see you next Tuesday night. Thanks so much for tuning in. And cut. Thank you.